call the meeting to order of the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission. Um, we have a relatively short agenda. First on the agenda is the review of our August 3rd, 2016 minutes. Um, Paul, would you like to get a quick summary? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we, as Jack said, we met on August 3rd. Um, the three commissioners were present. The first thing we did was we reviewed and approved the July 13th meeting minutes. The next topic was a op open letter to the citizens of Brockton that we've been discussing for a number of uh, meetings. And this is a uh, letter that would be placed as an ad in the Brockton newspaper, the Enterprise. Um, at the last meeting, Jack and I expressed satisfaction with the content of the latest version of the letter, but um, Patrick had some concerns about the goal of the letter and the target audience. And at that point, I suggested that we table discussion because of you know, budget information that, we had, that I had received. Um, I then reported to the commission um, um, that we had received a $50,000 appropriation in the new budget, the fiscal year 2017 budget, and um, that was through the great efforts of our legislative delegation, which not only put it in, but overall with the government's veto. So that was, that was a significant effort on our, a part of our legislative delegation. And uh, then shortly after uh, I got that news on August 1st, I had a discussion with um, North County official Frank uh, Basler, who's sitting here, and we talked about um, how the commission would get access to the money from the previous fiscal year, fiscal year 2016, which is um, in custody of the uh, North County. And um, the specific point of discussion with Frank was well, how would we pay for the ad in the Brockton Enterprise, a newspaper ad that's going to be the open letter to the uh, residents of Brockton? And Frank said, typically what happens with a newspaper is you have to pay for the ad with a credit card. And um, in, in our case, since we don't have the money and the county has the money, Frank said uh, it would have to be someone using their credit card, presumably a commissioner. And uh, that person would then seek reimbursement from the county. So um, I reported all that to the commissioners, and um, there was general opposition to the idea of uh, the commissioners paying for something up front and seeking reimbursement. And we agreed that further discussions with the county were needed, and Frank is here tonight to, to have those discussions with us. Um, the last item at the August 3rd meeting was um, Jack O'Leary reminded uh, the fellow commissioners that the 1964 law requires that we annually select our officers, officers, and uh, after discussion, the motion was made to have Commissioner Larry serve as chairman, and I would serve as clerk, and that was approved by a three to nothing vote. And um, the commission voted three to nothing to adjourn at 8:35 p.m. on August 3rd. So that is a recitation of the minutes. Okay, Patrick, any discussion on the minutes? Any chance to review? Okay. Okay. Uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. The minutes are approved. Okay. Second item is discuss use of commission funds with Plymouth County officials. And I think Frank is just can't wait to have, speak up about that issue. So unless the commissioners think otherwise, I'd like to okay. have Frank Basler give us a, uh, a, a, a clarification of what we. How, how we can access the funds. Yeah, so the, the funds are there for anything and anyhow you want to spend them. I, uh, I agree with Paul 100% that our discussion was exactly as Paul uh, stated. Um, I did not know that was an issue. Uh, I stated that process thinking that that gives you the ultimate freedom to expend whenever you want on, on literally within minutes notice and then just get reimbursed. I have no problem, we have no problem as the county um, doing that for you. It's just going to take a little bit more when you want something as a commission, just let us know and then we'll put a credit card on it. The newspapers are the biggest challenge because generally they only want to deal with a credit card. And there is no credit card that the county has. Uh, municipal government, municipal finance, uh, our treasurer wants a receipt for something um, uh, prior to any kind of expenditure. So I have no problem. I do it all the time on my own personal credit card. Um, that's the only credit card that we use in the county. Um, 
you know, and, and uh, I put my credit card down and, you know, we, we can, uh, I have no problem if you want to uh, have the newspaper article written, give it to me, tell me where you want to post it, we'll post it for you whenever you want. Um, my comments to Paul, and, and I'll say it publicly and on the record, uh, this is your money, the county commissioners are not influencing that money and they're not holding it prisoner, it's within state guidelines so we don't get yelled at by the auditors, we'll, you know, we can't give you a bag of cash, but anything else that, uh, you know, we can do that you want the money for, we'll do. Um, I explained to Paul, you know, office supplies, let me know what you want, we'll order at WB Mason, and I personally will drop it over to wherever you guys want, or, or uh, I can even see if it can, they can drop ship to a different address. So, um, it's just kind of the unusual things, usually with, a, with a, um, an engineer or a contract, you're going to come up with a scope of services, and then you'll have an, a set amount or a fee, and or, or they'll progress bill you, and they'll give you an invoice, and then you submit it to us, and the, the commissioners sign off, as uh, we had told uh, the, the two commissioners in our early discussions, you know, as long as it's signed off by you guys, and signed off by the, the um, county commissioners, because it's a, it comes out of their bank accounts, and that's what the auditors want, um, we do anything you want. So... I apologize for the miscommunication. It was never uh, the intention of the commission of the uh, Plymouth County Commissioners to be anything but helpful and uh, servant to the to the water commissioners uh, going forward. I apologize. That just came on the back of the whole Plymouth County uh, seal, so it just seems like two back to back pain in the ass yep. minutia things. Yep. But um, that was th that's not the uh, intent on either. Yeah, I, I at least speaking for myself, I didn't think there was any intent on the right. county's part. It was just, it was just, it sounded like it was a required by law bureaucratic rule. It was well, the seal, yeah, the seal is a bureaucratic pain in the ass. Getting the funding. <laughs> yeah, but but the funding is the, is the municipal uh, municipal expense. Right. You know, any any well, receipt. No, it's uh, Bill Boulder from Pembroke. Yeah. I'm on the selectmen there, and I'm also on the um, fisheries. Um, we do that all the time in Pembroke. I use my card, uh, I don't know how many times, and it, uh, it's just the town wants a, uh, wants a bill. Right. So in other words, we go and buy supplies for the fishery stuff, or um, two-by-fours and hardware to make screening, or you know, or anything like that. Um, I just go put it on my credit card and get the slip and attach it to some, bring it to Sleckman's office and uh, next week I've, you know, I've got the fanny on. Yeah, but I, I understand as volunteers, um, yeah. you know, so I, we have no problem using our credit, using my credit card, which is what we usually do. We just bought an um, internet uh, domain name for the county, the, the new county, the, actually for our email that just got cleared. I put it up $250 on my credit card and yeah. bang, it's done. So just let me know what you guys want and literally we're here to help. Yeah, I understand that we, you know, a full page ad is probably a thousand bucks or so. Yeah, that, that's... It's, it's, um, <laughs> you're at the tail end of what a three year, four year battle to get any funding at all? Close to three. So yeah. it, it, it's you know, just some old scars. <laughs> yeah, it's it's we're a little gun shy about uh, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, but you have you have the fifty thousand. It's still sitting in the account, right? You know, which is right okay. right over here. Uh, as I reported last time, I was here. So um, I'm sorry. Uh, um, well, you had a question. Yeah. So let's go through some hypotheticals. And actually, the, the if, for example, so aside from the newspaper, we've covered that, and the office supplies. Um, we've talked about at previous meetings about hiring a consultant to do an assessment of the uh, Rockland Waterworks Department, in, in particular, um, how it relates to Silver Lake Management, Silver Lake Management, Mount Ponce Pond, Furnace Pond. And if we were to do that, how would that go? Is that something that we would work with you to do an RFP to um, select a consultant, or um, just can you give me your thoughts? I know. It's yeah, we're, we're more than willing to help with an RFP. You know, if you want to do an RFP, um, you know, depending, it really depends on the dollar amount of the of the relationship that you want to have. So we would follow the uh, procurement laws based on how much money uh, you you thought you wanted to uh, appropriate, and um, we actually would have a contract, and we'd sign off the contract. 
So if the contract with between you, once you picked a, a vendor, say it was for five thousand right. dollars or ten thousand dollars, that's what the lowest. Um, that's the lowest. Uh, you know, that's below procurement. We don't have to go out to bid or anything. Yeah. You might contact a couple of different vendors to get an hourly rate. Um, you know, you use your best judgment. You could use it. You know, uh, again, if it's ten thousand dollars, use your judgment of credentials versus hourly rate. You got to decide. We document why you pick. The, 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 the vendor that you wanted to, and then we'll do a simple one-page uh, service agreement with them. Ten thousand dollars if you want to uh, if you want to protect the committee's money and progress bill. You know every you know we get up maybe uh, every ten hours or fifteen hours or twenty hours if you're going to stretch it out over a couple months worth of work. You can progress bill if you feel comfortable enough managing and paying them all all off it. Uh, you know at one time the ten thousand. Off the contract, we can make a ten thousand dollar check based off that contract. Because then the contract's the receipt, the contract's the expenditure of the money right. that we can pay off. So, you know, you could call out ten thousand um, dollars payable and two five thousand dollar, you know, payments. You know, thirty days in and sixty days in to make sure you get, you know, that the the engineer doesn't disappear or something. So we're more than willing to do. What the contract? I, I would say that the Plymouth. The Plymouth uh, Central, the Central Plymouth County Commissioners, and then they would submit it. So we, um, the Plymouth County is not signing a contract or spending the money. They're just saying that you signed off on it. So it's it's the, you, you have the authority, right. but because it's sitting on their balance sheet, they have to sign to release it out of their bank. You know, so the bank account's okay. in your name right. with Tom O'Brien as the treasurer. He's bonded. So, and that's, that's why you guys couldn't get the money directly, because neither of none of you are bonded. Right. The treasurer is. So, um, is, they're not spending the money. You are spending the money. They're just signing off that now, okay, you've approved the, the reimbursement or the payment of, that, of those funds. So, we would sign the contract. Yes. Um, submit it to uh, Tom O'Brien. Yep. Not to, to myself. I'm yourself, know, right. Intermediary. And, um, so it's a two-step process. We sign the, well, obviously we go out to bid or do our procurement. Yeah. We sign the contract and submit it. That contract is essentially the receipt of the expense. Exactly. Okay. And then the commissioners uh, over the summertime met once per month, but they plan on going back to twice per month every every other Thursday. So you know, literally, it's a couple weeks away from cutting the check, and then usually we're a couple days after that for getting payment. A week after that for getting the payment. The money's sitting in the uh, bank account. Uh, completely dedicated, so it's not that you know cash flow wise. You don't have to worry. You know sometimes the municipality would say, "Oh, we don't have the money right now." Your money is in the bank. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the commissioners vote on every expenditure that's coming on, on this. They, they don't. Again, they don't vote to approve your expenditure. They, they vote to release the money to pay the expenditure. It's right. a different. It's a difference. Right. Right. So they can't say, "Oh, we disagree with that expenditure." All they're doing is releasing the treasurer to pay that bill. Right. And they are um, making sure that the financial laws are, are followed. Correct. So in the end of the day, if you spend 39000 and there was 50000 in there, they're held accountable because of that $11,000 right. is missing. Right. So that's all they, you know, that the county is only the stewardship of the, of the holding of the money. Your commission is the expenditure arm and the approval of the expenditure. A lot of stuff we can do internal, um, you know, so the office supplies we can do internal, internally uh, shift um, your, your uh, letterhead when you, you know, give me the okay, your cards, when you give me the okay, that's, that's not going to be billed externally, it'll, it'll be creating an invoice, give it to you and we'll just shift the money, you guys will sign off on the invoice and we'll just shift the money from that account out of you know out of your account you know if it's uh, you know uh, one hundred and fifty dollars for the leadhead and the uh, uh, in the cards. You mentioned another mechanism for us to access money that her organization had apparently used in the past, which was to create their own bank account and then submit an invoice to the grant to the, whoever was holding the money, and then that money was put into that bank account, and then her organization then made the expenditures in accordance with the law. Um, under their own direct control. Yeah, well, and you do have direct control, It's and, and you feel free to do that. We, you know, we okay. can cut the check over to you guys right back. You know, we, okay. we've been, again, we're trying to help. 
Yeah, we might want to do that, and, uh, and I, I just want to bring up that I did go to the trouble of, of, of speaking to some banks and meeting with a bank officer, and I actually have a, uh, an, an I tax ID for our commission now, and I also have all the paperwork to open up an account. That's great. Yeah. So if we want to have our own bank account, we, we're two signatures away from doing it. So just to clarify that, within the state laws about finances and public organizations, there's no law that, that forbids us from taking some cash. Let's say we, if we wanted to just have some working capital like that in a bank account, let's say if we want to take 10000 out of the 50000 and to say we're transferring it to our own personal bank account, provided we're okay with that. Well, it's not personal. No, 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 no. Well, when I, when I say personal, I meant to say the commission's bank account. Sorry, that was the one word. It be the commission's bank account. So there would be no law, state law, that would forbid that. You'd just still be the facilitators of making that happen. I would want to talk to the treasurer. The auditors are very strict. We go through an annual audit. If you, I don't think you can be half pregnant. I think either. It, and is however, you all, can figure out all the money. money. Well, no, we, none we of the money. You're we, saying. We would generate you're saying? An, yeah, yeah, I think. Way of my understanding. Okay, I see what you're saying. We would generate an okay. invoice from the commission to to the, the, the um, to the that would be used to process that money, and then we would take the money from the that's invoiced and then spend it spend it on those items we. Generated the invoice. So uh, I'm not a really great, and you probably, you know, you, you know a lot more about state finance than I do, mm -hmm. whether you can do that. I don't think, uh, given what the auditors have just put us through, I don't think you can do that. And the reason why we got the money for you is because we have a bonded treasurer, we follow the procurement laws and things like that. So is, is that what DCR said to you or to Tom when they, when they proposed transferring the money? To yeah, it was, it was. It was uh, Representative Coulter working with uh, Treasurer O'Brien that that's why Representative uh, Coulter re recommended because he knew we had the, the vehicle to be able to manage the, uh, the resources. I don't know whether DCR will release money directly to the committee. Uh, we're not looking for it. Uh, we're looking to send the invoice to the county to access the funds that have already been released. That those that money is in the county hands now, right? Right, but I'm the not the fiscal year school. 17. Well, it has. Are you think you had? Well, good point. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking both ways. Confused. Let's stick with the old money first. I'm really confused. Yeah, I'm really confused. You're saying you're saying about getting our own bank account. So yeah. So we don't have to go to the state to the county every time we have to spend money. Right. right. For, right. We, we'd have so to my question here. is right. So you're saying every year we go and say here's an invoice for the fifty thousand dollars for the Plymouth County Commit Water Commission. We take that money and then we just take out, we keep our own clear cut records for public discourse and, right. and any questioning. Right. But I don't know if that would be legal. I, I, I can't answer that. Yeah. So uh, we, we'd have to, uh, Treasurer O'Brien would be, would be better. I, I can call him and ask him right now. Um, I know he had another commitment this evening, but he's probably in the middle of it to, to well, you can get you. back to us on yeah. that. It's it's not, is a, it is a valid question. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's, to answer your question, Frank, to me, in my experience in the state government finance is, if you're a state agency, it's not an issue. You've got an appropriation. It goes on the state accounting system, which is called MARS, and you go through all the very torturous procedures that they have to pay things. It's basically a purchase order system. Mm -hmm. In other words, you set up an order, you set up a purchase order for W.P. Mason, and then you pay off that. You know, and in the in the state government world, state uh, the state comptroller says it's okay, it's legitimate, they follow all the rules, and then he tells that to the treasurer, and, and the payments go out for weekly warrant from the governor's council. That's the state agency world. We're not a state agency per se. We're kind of an odd duck. Well, yeah, we're, at least. yeah. We're, well, I guess my my thought on this is that since we aren't, we don't have a clear home. It, that means we're independent, mm -hmm. and I'd like for us, frankly, to be as independent as we possibly can be. And I'm yeah. very appreciative of the yeah. county's help, but uh, it might be in our best interest to take direct control, not of every nickel of the money, because some of the money goes to the county for right. for the effort. And also, there's a lot of there's a lot of expenses you've already outlined that you're much better off handling than we are, like office supplies or email fees and things like that. But as far as uh, paying for ads in the newspaper or hiring consultants, um, I mean, it's something I, I do all the time in my daily job. It's not hard to do, and 
essentially it is a, it is, as you said, it's a purchase order setup. Right. We would set a budget. Purchase order contract setup. We, we would break out a budget that would go to, to the county, to you, saying, okay, here's how we intend to spend the $50,000 in the next fiscal year. X number of dollars goes to the county for the administrative work, uh, allowance for whatever for administrative costs, and then we're going to spend $40,000 on consultants and $5,000 on ads. And for each one, a purchase order to be issued as, as it happens. Uh, and then uh, to us, we issue it to the consultant. And then when the work is done, we pay them and we keep records of it. I, I just, it sounds like it's an extra, extra steps then, just yeah. getting an invoice. It sounds like that's a lot more work. Well, uh, it, it just is. Getting an, just getting an invoice, giving it to me, and, we'll, and we pay it. Well, there's a price to be paid for freedom, as, in all, as always. You, you have all the freedom yet? I don't understand where the restriction or where the lack of freedom has come from. Well, because we'd have to wait to, to, to uh, decide on payments and, and, and handle the paperwork and then ask for reimburse, ask for payments. It has to go through the county, which is an extra step. Whereas if we had $40,000 for consultants in our bank account, and as, as we work with the consultants, we simply paid them and documented it, that would eliminate a step. And, and the other thing is, is that people who pay quickly, as a consultant myself, go right to the front of the line. And when people find out they're in a long line of, uh, you know, you've got to wait and wait and wait, then it's like, okay, well, I'll get to it then. Well, if the commissioners meet on a monthly basis, and I come to the meetings, I, missed, I did miss the last one, but I've been to everyone since we started a relationship. And I bring an invoice to Tom tomorrow that's signed. You can't pay an invoice without the signatures of the uh, commissioners. Open meeting law doesn't allow you to sign without a meeting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, literally the check would be cut uh, the next time the commissioners met, would be, which would be Thursday night. Again, you know, this is a lost leader for us. We, you know, I'm coming out a couple hours a week, you know, to support you guys. And, you know, our total fees, we talked about $1,000 for the entire year, you know, for, for your, for your uh, different support, for any right. support and procurement. Yeah, but lost leaders, we're a lost leader every time we come to a If, I, <laughs> we're, 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 if we're, I may. We're all doing this for nothing. If I mean, so. what, it, what it sounds like to me, um, there's already an avenue of us getting the funds without any, any real hiccup. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, it's clearly that, that the county, um, in my, my opinion, I think our opinion is that we're, we're in charge of the money. We decide where to spend it no matter what, and we will be responsible to the public and the state who give us that money. Mm -hmm. So it's on, the, it's on the shoulders of the commission. Right now, just because the money's in the county, doesn't matter. I think the avenue's there, and it seems, it might just maybe take a month, but it seems very clear cut to me. It's like, we decide, if, let's say, for example, two examples, um, hiring a contractor under the procurement laws of the state, below the amount of money, we wouldn't have to go out to bid or RFP. We could just hire someone for a couple thousand dollars. We okay on it. That contractor says, okay, fine, you'll get billed in a month or whatever. We just submit the invoice. They take the money off our balance sheet. Eventually, the check either goes directly through that contractor or through us, and we hand that check to the contractor. Ergo, now what about actual goods? What if we wanted to buy, let's say, just a hypothetical, the commission wanted to buy a, a two-person canoe or something or whatever that nature, right? How do we get that cash? Well, there goes the question of how can we put... How can we get funds from the $50,000 out of the county into an account already that might have a credit card or something for easy cash without having to go through what's already established is me taking out my Amex card, buying it for the commission, which I don't mind doing that even though we don't want to do that. I get the points on my Amex card. There's some perk there. Let's all talk about it. And then we submit that invoice to, to us. We agree, yes, that's a good bill. We give it to the Plymouth County. They just take that money off because no matter what bill goes to Plymouth County, they just say, pay, pay, because they're only going to get bills from us that say yes, yes, yes. Never are we ever going to ever have that part of the equation of questioning why we're spending money anywhere, it seems that's like. Exactly. It's on our shoulders. That's not, and we'll that's be not responsible. Plymouth County. That's yeah. not Plymouth County's. Yeah. The big question that I still have is how can we, if it's legal, to get some funds, if not all of the funds, out of the Plymouth County treasurer, to our own bank account so we can easily spend money. But I think the question of someone being bonded is really it because it is state money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think someone might have to be bonded for that. So as of now, we might just have to uh, do that unless we somehow come up with a thing where, where is it a thing where we can 
put an invoice for, say, let's say, some we come up with some account, we create some entity within our own our commission where we create a bank account for ourselves that keeps only a certain amount of money in, and we keep that full for some, somehow we make that legal way within ourselves, and we say, hey, ten thousand dollars is coming out of Plymouth County for our bank account, our everyday bank account. I, I don't have problems going that way. I don't know if other organizations have done that, but right now that's where I see where we're at. Um, yeah. um, I'm comfortable with what Frank described because that's the world I came from, which was, in this case, the county's acting like a controller. Mm -hmm. So they are not, when I worked for the trial court, controller didn't say, well, wait a minute, you, right. should, you shouldn't have hired that digital recorder company for the court. They didn't pass judgment on that. They passed judgment on, was there a contract on file with them? Was it, did they have common terms and conditions, a standard language? And were all the other state finance laws followed? So that's the world I'm from, is that they're acting like the comptroller. We do our work. We do the contracts. We select the vendors. They're not going to pass judgment on that. And they're bonded, and we're not. So, I, and I do, I do, now that I know that, I do think that's probably why DCR didn't want to dispatch the money to us directly. Um, I also agree with Jack that it would be nice to have the freedom to have the full amount of money in a bank account under our control. But with that freedom comes a lot of responsibility and a lot of risk. We're not bonded. So, um, We've talked about that before at one of our meetings. And you know, I, you know, I feel like possibly we are bonded because you know when I sound my name to that book in City Hall, Brockton, Brockton, I'm pretty sure you get bonded. When I was a Brockton Water Commissioner, I was a bond, I was bonded. But what book are you talking? Well, when you say bonded, what kind of bond are you it's talking? Financial about? bonding, so that if it's a it's an actual financial liability that if anything happens to the money, he's actually insured. Right. See, this one is about being sued. Yeah. Well, Liability. no. This is no right because when you when made. you're a public when you're a public you can't be sued if you're a public volunteer right. working. In right. So this is something else then. This yeah. is something else. This um, is financially bonded as treasurer of the of the yeah. funds. And the county does that as a thing to protect the individual. <laughs> well, the uh, county is. Hear that, but also Tom history. Uh, treasurer O'Brien is bonded because of the county. Right. I understand that. Yeah. But what's the what's the foundation of having someone bonded for that reason? It's just in case they make a mistake and the money's yeah, gone, or yeah, something. It's a, it's a, it's or a, or something a, happens. It just malfeasance, yeah. misfeasance, yeah. blah blah blah. Well, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I think the question still stands is that, is that I we're curious to know if there is any any law on the table that says that that a commission can't have its own bank account and or funds. I, w I wish um, I wish yeah. Representative Calter was here because. I think that is exactly why, because you guys would have had to spend that fifty thousand dollars immediately within oh, a yes. year. Yeah, I'm um, used to oh, that's why. That's why I was pestering him all through fiscal twenty sixteen because yeah. I knew that very well, yeah. and that by by ex, they expended the money by sending it to the county. Exactly, that was the equivalent so of expenditure. So that way it didn't go away at the end of the right. Fiscal exactly. Year. Yeah. yeah. But so the question is, so you. you you know, and I would just say from protocol basis, it's and I've been in lots of volunteer boards. I don't know, and I've been chair of lots of boards. I don't know whether it would be. It's not. A, it, I'll just say it. I'm not trying to no, 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 be, tell us, be tell politically us correct. It's poor uh, practice to have a bank account that has no. You know that. You know. Uh, doesn't have a check and balances, and the whole state is always about yeah, yeah. you know the, the funds come in by one person, they go out by another person. It's all checks and balances, and it's and it's all um, you know that's the the practice, the, the protocols that are built around around financial management, and it's you know a small group. You know, to me, I th I thought we were offering you guys to do your charge and to get every do, you know focus on as much. You know, there and just give you the financial. Yeah, and, I, and I agree. I agree with that. And yeah. my only objection was um, pulling up our own money yep. for like And I understand that. Like that. Well, I'd like to say a few more things. One, the, the bank account would come with the credit card, so it would be very easy to run an ad. Two is that I, I worked under a system, you know, in volunteering for the town, and um, we had very, very many, many very minor expenditures, and quite a few of them were held up by someone. Um, in fact, one in particular was really great because we figured out a way to save a lot of money on an expenditure, 
is someone in the in the um, treasury treasure uh, treasurer's department held it up and and uh, made us do it different you know made us spend more money because of some procedural issue I don't know what how that was uh, you know it, it seemed silly everybody on the board was aggravated. Well, that seems like it will never happen here because it just seems like you guys, with the, I guess the fee of a thousand dollars is helping to take care of the fact that you're going to right. administer the money, and and uh, if that's the case of what you're saying, which I believe you absolutely, that if there ever becomes an obstruction in the future, you know, you'll you'll see me um, fight that. <laughs> you know, absolutely, there's no question about it. So I'm pretty happy how it's going. Yeah. I fought that too. Yeah. I lost every you know. time. Well, I mean. The, the, um, the, uh, Every day is different, and I'm pretty happy that you're here explaining that to, to me especially, because now I understand that process. And I think hopefully in the future, if we could somehow, and I understand the checks and balances of, 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 of finances and stuff, and even small organizations, you have two people signing checks, or yeah, you, you do some sort of thing, or, or, you, or you possibly, um, the commission possibly elects someone outside of the commission to audit the commission, or, or be the semi-pseudo-treasurer. We can do those things. Um, the more we do it openly within the public opinion, I think it'll be fine. But uh, as of now, it seems like you know if we need to uh, get funds, there's an avenue, and we just have to create the, the proper protocol. I think, or if there's a protocol for you, us to follow for to get to you, just let me know. You know, yeah. um, you know. I think Paul can say that. Yeah. You know, whenever you call, I return the call, and oh, email so, yeah. is pretty immediate. And, yeah. It's you know, very, it's it's my well. email right now. So yeah. you know. Well, let's let's say questions. this. Let's say it's a hypothetical. We're going to hire someone to do something for $1,000. Just, I'm just going to hypothetical there. They give us an invoice. We have a record in our minutes that, yes, we approve this. Okay. We give a copy of that invoice to you and also a letter from the commission saying that we approve this to be paid. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. And then you would just send a check check directly to that person? Yeah. That, that okay. Generally, we could do whatever you want. You know, Jack, as you said, bring it to deliver it to you guys. If you want to deliver it, or just may drop it in the mail, so it is straightforward. But the devil's in the details in this Absolutely. sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think we shouldn't worry about the details as of, as of now until until it really, um, if it if it does affect us in a negative way. Otherwise, we're just sitting around worrying about a negativity that could never happen. Well, is that contract mm -hmm. going to so, wait? Yeah. Thirty plus days to get to get paid. I mean, most contractors, I think some will, and 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 they have to be willing to do that. I think. And when you say an invoice, is the, is the service provided or the goods provided? We decide that. A, a, a we decide contract. That. We decide. A contract. It's all us. Or an, uh, an invoice counts as what, what we would pay off of. So even for a relatively small expense, 500 to 1,000, we'd have to have a contract or an invoice. Now, for, is it for our personal services or is it for a good? Let's, so if say, it's for, let's say it's personal services. Okay, so a contract ahead of schedule. When, whenever you decide you're gonna, whenever the commission decides they're gonna use it, then we'll just create the uh, create an invoice. You know, they'll give you a, they'll give you an invoice for five hundred dollars. Okay. And you'll sign it. I'll take it. I'll yeah, take it at the meeting and think, yeah. and deliver it to the commissioners to get signed. Okay. And the com the commissioners they are all elected, correct? Correct. And they have to yep. sign Dan off in every single expenditure. As a matter of fact, uh, Dan Pilato was uh, coming here tonight with me, the chair. Uh, to say hello, and he got called away for a business. He's a construction engineer. Oh, okay. um, but he was going to come tonight, too. Uh, Dan Pilata is from uh, Hanover. Um, uh, Greg Hanley is from Pembroke. And uh, Sandra Wright is from uh, uh, East Bridgewater. Wow. That's Bridgewater. Right. So do we want to have uh, uh, any more discussion? Do you want to make a motion on how to proceed um, with the payment process? I know Jack has gone to the work of contacting the bank. And Establishing an employee yeah. ID. I number. put a lot of effort into this. So I'm, I'm no, I think I think well. There's one avenue we can do. We could, we could wait to see if, from a word if there is some legal caveat somewhere about um, finances being put into per, not into a commission or a committee's personal account. I don't think there is anything that legally. I really don't. I've looked at this stuff before. We could on ourselves make a motion to uh, create an, an invoice for ourselves to submit to Plymouth County saying that we agree that this is something of the nature of uh, creating a small accounts payable or just general operating operating account with a small fee, a small amount, maybe $5,000, $10,000. We sign off on it, we create an invoice, send it to, send it to the county, 
um, waiting for a check to come back to us so that we can deposit into an account. All right, so why don't we do this? But also, we'd have to create a system where I think we'd have to have a treasurer, a cosigner, this, all that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we, well, we're going to have to do that. If you're, if you're going to go off the, the, um, the schematic that Frank has described, we are going to have to do that. Because what Frank has described is we approve something, and they are the checks and balances. They check to make sure, not that, not that we hired the right contract, they check to show the financial laws have been followed to the, so they're comfortable making the disbursement. Um, maybe, Frank, the thing to do is to talk to Tom O'Brien about Patrick's idea that we send the county an invoice for 5000 10000 for incidental expenses that we may have. Um, that are, as you said, Jack, that crop up. You said you, uh, on your uh, planning board you have many small expenses. And instead of like constantly sending it to the county and waiting two weeks to, to, to have it done, maybe if we had a small pot of money for incidental expenses, not the big things like consultants or anything like that. So in that scenario, Frank, I guess the question to Tom is if we sent the county an invoice for such amount of money for such purpose, would that be uh, allowable? Yeah, and I just pulled out the uh, standard contract from between um, TCR and uh, and uh, Plymouth County, and this is what the initial payment was. And I was just looking to see if there was something um, on here that uh, talked about what kind of backside audit there was, but it, it doesn't. I don't see it. A quick. Uh, Purview. There's no such thing as reading a standard Commonwealth Massachusetts contract. Yeah, the, no, yeah, the, the, it's an oxymoron, isn't it? It's, they are just, it's tough. It's not a tough contract in terms of the terms. Just so does it sound like this fifty thousand dollars was sent to us without case. really much of any any anyone really saying what are you going to do with it? Well, no, the the legislation is clear. It's for the use by the the. C P C W. I understand, but it doesn't sound like they're looking for any back audit or like, hey, what are you gonna do with this money or you know. Well, see, I like think that's so. Everything is auditable uh, yeah, by, by course, the state. So, course. so, and that's why I don't think your petty cash idea is gonna work. Is because then you're gonna have some receipts in a box somewhere, and then you're gonna have the money in the bank, and then you're gonna have us holding the big part. And that's the whole point of the half pregnant thing. Uh, you know, I. And I'll ask. I'll ask. The well, well, I, I can see that analogy, but but if there's a, if there's a trail of oh, this year they took out five thousand dollars for operating expenses, and then there's a record auditing of those five thousand dollars, your half pregnant thing doesn't work because there's a clear cut record of that five thousand dollars coming off your balance sheet already. So that to me doesn't work. So I need to know if there. We need to know whether or not there's a real law of whether or not. Yep. And, I, and I will ask whether whether the, whether the commission can create a five thousand dollar pay yeah. cash. Um, account that can be utilized by by the vote of the commissioners. Yeah. And we would and we were the ones we would we would be uh, responsible for how we spend our money by 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 the state legislators and the public. You know, yep. someone will say, "Hey, how'd you spend it last year?" They find we're spending all the lunches. Now. People are going to say, "What are you doing?" If they spend it for something else, people might say, "Oh, I understand." You know, so I, I don't mind taking that step. The, the, the other and the other the other detail. Yeah. This is a lot of details. In this is us getting together in an open meeting to approve these expenses, large or small, and, you know, um, given, and giving the public 48 hours notice uh, or more would be open meeting law. Do all financial approvals have to be on an open meeting law? I'm assuming the worst. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, every, I'm, every I'm assuming yeah. the worst. Yeah, yeah they, they do. They have to be signed off. Uh, quick question. Um, did, is, what's on the ballot this November as far as ballot questions regarding the county? Did that actually make it on there? Oh, I don't know. Okay, does anybody know? No. That's the back of my mind is we could be working really well with the county then. Yep. What do you mean? Well, there's, there's a ballot, proposed ballot measure to eliminate counties. Oh, eliminate oh, right. county. Yeah, all counties. for years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Half of them already right. gone. There was a, there was a state law um, that said if the, if the communities vote in a particular county to abolish county government, the state will take it over. And that's happened. In most counties, let me see what's left. Plymouth, Bristol, Norfolk, maybe Dukes and then Dukes. I'm not sure. Dukes. Yeah. I think that's it. It all seems to be uh, south. Of the state. I think Let's it's cross that when we reach that point. Yeah. yeah that's, well, we're almost there. Yeah. Months away, so that's why. Not on the ballot. Another question I have, which I don't know. Not on the ballot. I'm sorry? Not on the ballot. Oh, it's not. Okay. Good.
Good, Mel. I guess that's good. For us. Yeah. Um, the other question I have is if we're doing things under the, the gentle hands of state audits, um, is somebody going to require us to meet diversity goals in our contract? Because that's what I'm subject to in my business is we, um, there are the diversity goals, so it makes it a lot more complicated to put together a bid package. Yeah, I mean, that's why um, I, I am comfortable with what Frank suggested uh, for that. That's just another reason, you know. Right. Um, well, no, I mean, we, we, if, we, if we administer it ourselves, we might not have to worry about that. You know, that's that's still state be, money. It's our money. No. <laughs> the uh, state I, audit doesn't look <laughs> at it that way. Just a few weeks ago, I wrote a check to the state, and well, I I'd like to have... have I wish I wish I had the control that, that, that they have over my money. Over my money. Um, <laughs> I know how much is wasted. So I have a feeling that we're not we're not being looked upon with a with a very heavy finger from state organizations. So I think we should just play it by ear and, and go forward and try to do what we want to do and see what we can spend this money on. He's calling Tom right now. Can I just say something on that? Yeah. Um, that uh, I think it's a good idea to stay with the county. I personally myself, um, I just got, we just got through doing a big three hundred thing in Pembroke of two thousand and twelve. Um, and it worked out great. Um, everything that we did, I mean it was it was events every month, mm -hmm. uh, all, all year long. And some of them would give you uh, We'd give you a bill ahead of time that you could submit so yep. that you could have the check um, ahead of time so that, let's say like the fireworks is coming sure, right, on yeah. Friday night. So they'd give you a, a bill ahead of time for the fireworks. You keep the, you keep the check. When the guy shows up and he commits the service, then you hand him the check and say, here you go, we like, you, know, you did a great job. Also the county wouldn't uh, do that? I, I don't see why they wouldn't wouldn't uh, like because you guys I've done that before. Where you you've submitted invoices um, prior to right. the work being done, knowing the work was going to be done, and once the work was done, you handed over the check. You did the paperwork prior to the actual physical action happening. It happens all the time. Right. It happens in the film business too. People do that all the time. That's yeah, an easy way to do it. If we know if we know something's going to happen and the payment should happen in October, and October first is when it's going to happen. All the bills and everything happened in October, so you have them ready to go for you know in August or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah it's state finance is not that easy. At, at the end of the year, though, it's really nice when when they come in to do the audits and all that stuff, and they're going through all of the towns, um, people that do this for a living. That, I mean, every day this is what they do. Mm -hmm. So money comes in, you, you put it in there. Oh, yeah. I'm out, pretty sure in state finance law, you cannot incur, you, know, you cannot. Um, Pay a bill unless the serve goods or services have been rendered. Frank, or Frank just said you could do that. Or you yeah. have a contract. If you have a contract. Yeah. Well, here's what happened though. Is that, here's what happened. Is that you guys handed over the checks the day of the service. The checks are dated the day of the service. Right. So therefore, it all works like that. I understand that, that yeah. but I don't think the state. I don't think the state auditor uh, is going to trust that process, whereby they'll say. Okay, that's okay, Paul. You, I know you're going to hold the check until the service is rendered. I don't think the state government works like that. Well, yeah, I think state right. government. So you get the check. I, I have to throw Ryan on, and he might be able to better explain it. No, we do. Basically, the same points that I was talking about. But uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Tommy. Tom, you there? Welcome to the meeting. Good evening, gentlemen. How's everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? We're good. We're a little good. confused, but that's okay. <laughs> Somebody named Frank Bass or Seniors calling, by the way. I'm sorry, go ahead. Can, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Yes, pretty well, yep. Okay, excellent. I'll try to speak up. I know you're important to Frank Drake, the elder of the meeting, and said, hey, anybody from <laughs> DCBC, WDC needs us, we're going to be there. I said, absolutely. So just as a reminder, and you guys know this, um, one of the challenges that we all had was trying to figure out a way to get some money because and your state representatives have worked hard to make sure money was available, but state agencies, as we know, don't release that money very quickly or willingly, and they weren't going to release it to an entity that didn't exist and have all of the safeguards against uh, fraud and abuse that a town has or that the county has. And so what the county did on your guys' behalf to get the money quickly and then allow you to spend it over a period of time so you didn't have to scramble and try and spend the money by June 30th of last year was sign a contract with them agreeing to certain conventions and rules and regulations make sure that the money isn't, isn't spent inappropriately. And those rules and regulations include uh, audit review and guidelines. So when there's an audit being done, the county will be the one being audited, it, not you guys. The county is the one that has to retain the record, not you guys. And so we're the ones, fortunately, for you that are on the hook. Um, so the good news is Frank is consistently saying, and the commissioner wants to make sure, that whatever it is you 
of course, and within reason, we want to make sure it happens as quickly and as soon uh, as possible. And I can't envision a scenario where, you know, again, as long as it's within law, uh, you can't do whatever it is we would want to do. Uh, and just, I wanted to add that level of comfort to you folks that anything that you want to do, again, as long as it follows the statutes, uh, we're going to make happen as quickly as we possibly can. And then just remind you that we're taking on the administrative and auditing burden to make sure everybody stays out of trouble, uh, just even avoiding doing something inadvertently. I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, I'm here. I want to get some. Hi, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this is Commissioner Patrick Quinn from Brockton. The, the standing question is, is where we, I think I, we clearly understand the avenue of getting the funds from the county, which thank you so much for, for providing that service. We're wondering, is there a law, or does the law provide us or inhibit us from, let's say, creating our own bank account, a small amount of money, let's say it's five or $10,000, so that we can just for uh, incidentals and operational expenses, um, that we would keep our own auditing records and then provide them back over to the county if you needed them. Yes, actually it does, as does the contract by which the NHCD, or I'm sorry, the agency, the state agency would release the money. So you can't have those incidental funds, because unfortunately over the years, and I know this would not happen here, but those funds tended to be the ones that suffered more abuse, and so they are prohibiting uh, most state agencies, most communities from having that type of a fund which Unfortunately, people used to refer to it as a slush fund, but right. it's an intel account. So those are, in fact, for Okay, well, that clarifies we that. We lost you. I think we lost him. Time no, is still. Oh, so, okay. you're, so you're saying the law now does not allow that? That's correct. It never. So there was some dispute whether that allowed it, but they tightened up the law over the last five years. And so a state agency is never going to give money. I'm going to give you an example. We got some money to. Um, begin to operate a dredge program. Uh, even if a town got money, there are incidentals that come up that we would like to be able to just cover and then bring to the commissioners after the fact or bring to the governmental agency. But the state now now says, no, you can't do that. It needs to be an expense approved or agreed upon ahead of time. Uh, and you can't just take the money and hope for reimbursement later. Um, so many communities have done away with it. Those responsible treasurers don't permit that from happening, and I doubt you'll find that type of, thing, type of an incidental account in any state-sanctioned enterprise or contract. So we signed a contract saying we wouldn't do something like that. I get you. So in other words, not that we would want it for any slushing, but there's no real way of getting any cash on hand. A absolutely not. And again, okay. if you think about it, well, I know you guys are all very trustworthy. <laughs> No, of course. Yeah. It's no, the cash that's used. Yes. And so towns and departments, a lot of times it happened with BPW and three departments, they were asking for cash on hand because, you know, they go to the store and they have to buy a pound of fertilizer or something, right. a, a pound or whatever you buy, a bag of fertilizer. And so they pay cash, but hey, something happens to the change. So the audit standards are far more strict now than they were even seven years ago. Right. Uh, and uh, are prohibited. Or you skip the procurement laws by billing the same person between the fiscal year, between the end, of, the end of July and the beginning of the next fiscal year. And it's a summer month still, it's the same person. That happens in Brockton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, we just, the, the easiest way to avoid that is no cash. Right, no, very good. But that's, yeah. people, but that's like, people are not doing that. And it, just, it, it really makes it, it makes it better for everyone. I'm not sure that's the case. That's like trying to run an engine without oil in it. Well, I know. So my only thought is, and I know you guys have some things coming up. Whatever it is, we can plan. And Frank is excellent at this. <coughs> and I like to think I'm pretty darn good at it, too. You know, even in 24 hours, we can turn something around. So I'm not sure how that would leave the oil. And if you need oil on stock, let's go ahead and order it. Let's go ahead and order the oil. We can order 25 barrels of oil and whatever you guys need. And have it ready to go. So I'm not sure whatever so, Tom, this is Paul Collis. So, um, in the, using the oil analogy, if we did want to stock up on oil, we send a purchase order to the county, or how would we do that? Well, again, we want to be flexible to you guys. We don't want to make this that difficult. So, if you guys vote that you need to buy a gallon of oil, 
Yeah. The three commissioners would vote for that expenditure, and um, you know I don't want to commit Frank to something I can certainly do this, but we create up the invoice if you guys want us to. We're here to provide that support for you. We put the invoice out there. We would get it voted on, and depending on how quickly it needed to be turned around, I'd rush it through as an emergency with the commissioners. If it's if it's in wait a week, we'd wait for that meeting and have the vote on it, and then we would buy the oil for you guys. We'll kind of check to Smith Oil Company. Okay. I thank you, and I understand that. I guess my problem is one of semantics. Uh, from the state government finance world I came from, an invoice was for something that had goods or services that had been rendered. So when everyone's using invoice here, it just clangs with me. It doesn't, it, you know, I just don't understand it. You know, it's either a contract, in my world, it was either a contract or a purchase order. I would say today, today, today an invoice could be a contract. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, all we're going to I mean, ultimately, ultimately, all you'll need is a vote from a, a, a record of us voting to pay an invoice, and we handle any contracts that we deal with in the future with any person that we want to hire. Don't state law, of course, yeah, yeah. And, and again, Frank is there as a resource, right? Too. That's great. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we're here to give you expertise and to help make sure everything runs smoothly. Thank you. We well, appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate your efforts, and I don't mean this in a negative connotation, but the, 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 reason why we're, the reason why we're kind of, at least I'm kind of worked up about this, is that we were on a roll moving smoothly, and then we got the news that we couldn't run an ad without charging it to our personal credit cards, and that that really kind of gummed up the works on getting our open letter out. So um, I could, you know, it sounds like you've got a solution, or Frank got a solution going forward. But that's that's the reality of it. Is yeah, there any way we can the county can secede from the state? <laughs> well, I think I think with its own rules are a little, a little easier as we go forward. <laughs> This, yeah, this may be more us having to figure out how to work with the system. And um, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I've had the luxury of being in the private sector where I can run rings around. Uh, oh, I know. I, I've spent uh, ten years working the head up for the law firm and, and understand exactly <laughs> how yeah. simple that can be. It's, it's, and we're it's, very sympathetic. And, yeah. You know, I've never seen anybody uh, charm snakes like Frank had. And we really, I don't see us holding anything up and doing whatever you guys need us to do. Uh, and if it's an emergency, you know, Frank and I have been known to drive wherever we need to do to get it resolved in 45 minutes. That sounds great. Excellent. Yeah, and literally, if you have your letter, we'll I'll call the newspapers tomorrow and have it published. Okay. So it's it's that it, we can be that quick. Well, that's what it becomes now in the f in the future is our relationship as a commission with with vendors too. You know, and you and you create accounts with people. You know, and they know you and they know we've got money. Oh yeah, we'll we'll definitely publish it tomorrow. Just pay us. Next month, when we give you the invoice, yeah, uh, that's some the vendors will do that, but the, yeah. I, I, the newspapers, I, I, I because they're all owned by bigger companies yeah. now, don't do. That. I understand they're that, all. but you know what? You never know, right? I, I don't mean to be contrary, so but I, I put legal ads in newspapers as part of my job all the time, and they always ask for the credit card. But when I say just send me a bill, they always agree to it. Okay, and it's six, yeah. seven hundred bucks. Great. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. every. No, I can't no, say it's no, every place, every newspaper either. Yes, you have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yes, Tom. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck with yeah, the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Better call your, dad. Better call your dad now. Bye. Yeah, I'll, I'll call him later on. <laughs> okay, so, um, so no incidental expenses. For him to so the, 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 yeah, the, sense. the only, uh, um, I'll have to call this very disappointed banker who will be disappointed of, but um, well, I thank you for doing the work. And I did, by the way, ex extract a big concession from him, too, as far as the I, 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 I didn't think we would commit fraud either, but I did want to have two signatures in every check, of course, no. which oh, normally absolutely. adds up to a big annual fee because they have to keep yeah. a lot of records for that. He waived it if we signed up. Yeah. It's still possible if we need to get a credit card, 
We put a normal amount out of our own funds in it. Hmm. I say if you uh, uh, if you have a budget, a yearly budget, if for some reason or other you were able to get a budget from the county or the state, you could probably do that and wouldn't be a problem. But when you on the grants, that they really have, they're really under control. Yeah, control. this is just an allocation. This yeah. is a, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was no there was no budget created to get this money, yeah. and I have a feeling that this allocation, in my opinion of how I believe things might be in the future is that this was a little bit of a seed to see what this organization can do with some money to possibly in the future say, okay, you know what? Give us a budget of projects maybe and we'll give you some money. That's where I think this might be. Why would someone just give money out anyhow? Possibly to do it, but if you can do better things with it and show you're going to go that way, this could lead to better things in the future for the county yep. you know, and the district. Um, but I'm pretty happy with, with everything you've said tonight, Frank. Thank you so much. Yep. Every, it, you know, there's paperwork, but to me, it doesn't seem like a lot of paperwork to get this done. It's a very simple, straightforward thing, and I think I think we'll be able to manage this. Yeah, I think it'll be yeah. fine. And again, yeah. thank you, Jack, yeah. for, for exploring yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Did you guys yeah. put similar efforts into something yeah. else? And then I'll be, you and I know you're putting a lot in. One last question, Frank, because one of the underlying concerns I had that made me really want to pursue this is that we are talking about putting an open letter into a newspaper and expending public money to essentially lobby. Is there going to be an issue with that? Because under the federal federal laws, I think it's called the Hatch Act, and that puts a lot of limitations on federal agencies and employees acting in their official capacity for lobbying for their own interests. But we're a state agency, essentially. And we are lobbying. In this letter, we could be perceived as lobbying for our own interests. And we have people that don't like us, and they might very well file some kind of objection to it. So I, I explained, I explained to Treasurer to Treasurer Ryan what you were trying to do, and yep. he had no issues. You're, that's your charge. You're, yeah, you're charging. You're I mean, educating. I think it's, I think it's personal interest. It's public interest. Right. It's right. public I mean, interest, and that, that's your charge. Your charge is to... To manage the watershed right. assets. So. You know, if I worked at NASA, I couldn't put an ad. I couldn't use NASA funds to put an ad in the paper saying, "Hey, isn't space exploration great? To spend more money on it." They, that's strictly for them. at the federal level. You can give out information about what happened in a particular launch or space probe, but you can't suggest that it's. Uh, needs, you know, I'd say I, federal agents market all the time. Yeah. I would too, but I think they're. The law's not being enforced on. I think lobbying is paying for uh, an agent to go and. Yeah. I, I think there's a, uh, well, a a clinical definition of lobbying. Well, and it's this also is not lobbying. You know, public and public. Uh, what's the word for it? Persuasion. Persuasion. I think yeah, we're, yeah. we're safe to say that anything that we might publish might be more yeah. on this side of a public service announcement. Yeah. And there's always going to be some people when it deals with water to want to politicize something. Let them bring it on. Bring it, bring it on. Okay. You know. Well, I, mean, I asked the question. You know? Yeah. No, no, no. no. You, it's a valid okay. question. Absolutely. I'm just saying. I'm very comfortable, any, any comfortable any that anyone also. can do that to us, and it's still going to be public service announcement. Yeah. Hey, All Jack, right. As a watchdog, mm -hmm. there's no election. There's no bill pending. Right. Yeah, we're looking, you know, we, somebody could construe it to, for us looking to enlarge our budget, for example, which, which we would like to do. You don't have a but agencies do that all the time. All the time. Okay. Well, <laughs> Every word that comes out of Maura Healy's mouth is uh, geared towards... Or Secretary Yeah, Green, sec yeah or, or, or DA, DA yeah. Cruz, or that's what political groups try to do is... I mean, I worked for the Chief for the Justice of the Trial Court for 27 years, and he was, okay, all, so. of them, all of them were trying to get more money put, for, for good public for their, for their reasons, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so are we done with that agenda item? We are. Okay, um, uh, next up is discuss impact of the drought in the water district. Um, well, so you went pretty dramatic. Um, um, and by the way, I think we might have a picture for our public service ad, too. Oh, yes, I saw that. The hose? No, the drone flight. Oh, the drone yeah. flight. That would be yeah. a good one. Sort of yeah. yeah. Wasn't that a good one, though? I mean, I can't believe we came up with that. That was good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was a Plymouth County, a car back. Aquifer, yeah. I mean, it was mainly through consultants who um, were very, you know, paid actually very well to do it. But I, I took a look at uh, Charlie's handwritten uh, tally of Plymouth County com communities that have uh, water restrictions and um, tried to update it. And 
first thing I did is went on the DEP website because they have a list and it's supposed to be updated as of August 18th. I said, Perfect, this makes my job easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I went on there. It's, it's inaccurate. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's never. For example, I'm sure Patrick knows, <coughs> Brockton voted, Brockton Water Commission voted for a, a water ban or restriction, they call it a ban, it's really a restriction, on August 12th. And the water is down quite a bit less. It's on, on August 12th they voted, yeah. but DEP has not updated their, their list, so Brockton's not on that list. So all I can tell you is that Brockton has voted, Brockton Water Commission has voted water restrictions. For the first time in a long time. I can't remember the last time they did it. But, um, so that's good news. You know, I think that's going to help uh, with, with, with you know, conservation. Um, Bill, since you're here, I'll ask you about Pembroke. What's the status of Pembroke? Do you have other water restrictions? Um, I don't know about any water restrictions that they put on because we're all, by, we're all uh, done by wells. Well, so is so, my town in so, Halifax. As is Hanson. Yeah. The, the only thing I can speak for is that our ponds are drastically, drastically low. Oh, sure. Uh, furnace Pond and Oldham Pond. Oldham Pond has natural springs that go into Furnace Pond, and it's not even, the water is not even running into Furnace Pond now. Um, we put up the gates um, June 1st to stop any water from going downstream. We're allowed to have 300,000 gallons a day to keep the streams open all you know all the way down. We we're supposed to have that. Is that Herring Brook? Yeah. yeah. We we're supposed to have that all year, right? So 300,000 gallons a day. And because Brockton took so much water um, from Furnace Pond, from Furnace Pond, right? Um, the level was down so low that um, we couldn't get that. 300,000 gallons a day. It was down so low, so we brought the gate up and stopped any water from going down at all because now it's even down, it's probably down better than two feet, um, you know, probably two, two and a half feet. It's a lot of the um, shoreline is also showing on Furnace Pond, which uh, uh, we were wondering what we we're going to do. This is a very big year for us in Pembroke. And I think I've come here and explained before that um, there's a couple um, really serious issues that, that I have being on the fisheries and being a selectman in the town. Mm -hmm. One of them is that um, Brockton is allowed to take water during migration periods, mm -hmm. right? And that's not good. Um, it's not good to take water during migration because it lowers the water level. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that the screen, did you get my letter that I sent a month or so ago? You know, somebody told me there was a letter coming and I kept going to our post uh, office. We, we, Halifax gets yeah. our mail, Charlie Sealy gets yeah. our mail, and uh, I've never seen the letter. I've heard so about it. When are the migration months again? Excuse me? When's the migration months period of time? Um, well, it, it usually starts in, um, in April, in April. Um, maybe the end of March, uh, the first part of April. Uh, this year, the first part of March, we had fish coming up. Yes. So we had migration coming up. Yeah, I heard it was a good one. So, um, and we had, we had uh, juvenile fish going down that wintered um, in the ponds that were going down. But Brockton stops diversions in March on that, uh, for that reason. But they, uh, they don't stop taking water in March period and they don't take it, you know, um, you know up until October. So October is, uh, they can start taking again, which is in the juvenile period, because September, we're hoping that September is a big month for us to get the juvenile fish down. I see. Right. Um, but they were running right up until December on the first week in January of last year. Yeah. Um, and I explained that to uh, Brockton. Mm -hmm. There are gates that are over there that and screens are broken. Yes. So we're asking them to fix them. We've been asking them for the last couple of years to fix them. Uh, Division of Marine Fisheries have asked them to fix them because the juvenile fish go in there and they go down to Silver Lake and they become food for someone else, you know, down there. They don't get out they don't get out to the ocean, which means they're not coming back. Yeah. Right. Well Brock doesn't want to spend any money. So the, gate, the gate that you were talking about before though, 
Is that broken as well? Excuse me? The gate you talked about earlier, is that broken as well? The one that you, you said you opened up? No, we closed it. You closed we, it. We, that one's not broken? Well, that, that's, uh, that really needs some maintenance on it. We yeah, these are all manual them. gates, right? To go. Yes. And yeah. we've tried to repair that ourselves, and we asked for help from Brockton. Matter of fact, one of the uh, one of the guys that does a lot of their maintenance work happened to be there on the dam one day that we were there, and he said, "Geez, uh, I could make this just like the other one. It wouldn't be any problem at all. I'll measure it off, cut the things that we need, come down, weld the things on there, and fix it right up for you." And I mean, he was. I said, "That's great. Talk to your boss and then see if we can't get it done, right?" But I mean, it takes an arm and a, it Did takes a man. It takes a man Did and a boy to the maintenance guy? Yeah. No, it's, right. Ed, it's Ed Clark. Yeah, Ed, Ed Clark, right? Yeah. Ed Clark. Um, it takes a man and a boy to turn, you know, that to move it up and down. And it's right. actually it's actually made the wrong way. It it goes the wrong way. And it's you know, it's kind of it opens it's on the bottom. It's the Australian version. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it opens uh, on the bottom. It's, it opens on the bottom, which it should on, it should on the top. It's, right, yeah, yeah, right. It's yeah, reversed yeah. to what it, what it does. But, but we can live with that if it was even fixed so that you could get on there and turn it easily. Right. So, but that's not happened. But, so we raised the gate ourselves to save water because we knew that the juvenile fit, that the adult fish were up. So we were okay with that. Right, we know that there was plenty of adult fish come up. Usually, it's been the count has been twenty to thirty thousand fish a year. Last year we had one hundred and twenty thousand. This year we had uh, like uh, one hundred and eighty-three thousand. So, so what this points out, so, we've, we've discussed this before, is that Brockton, the viability of Brockton taking water from Furnace Pond, is in the future not likely because of the herring. Um, the herring need the water, and Brock has a legal right under the 1964 law to take it October 1st, but it's going to endanger the herring, is what you're saying. Right. Doesn't Brockton also have an obligation to maintain the, the, yes. the yes. works you described as yep. to keep the herring going in the right direction? Yes. You're, you're reporting that they are not meeting that obligation. No. Right. Sir, do you have any comments on that too? I see you well, I, shaking I, your I, head I side. with Bill and then, you know, it was more like 200,000 because they pulled the counter and then a whole other flush came up. Mm -hmm. And my biggest concern is that the herring are trapped in Oldham Pond and there's no way for them to get out. They're trapped in what one? In Oldham Old Pond. Old yeah. If they make the top Old pond. Old L-G-H-A-N. The very top pond. Yeah. There was no and water that was spring fed the furnace. That's only spring fed. So Oldham Pond goes into the furnace pond? Yes. yes, naturally. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And why are they stuck in Oldham Pond? Because the level, is low, the level is so low, they can't so go through it first through a brook that's down basically. The algae is dead on the rocks. Yeah. You, know, you might be interested to know, this, this, I'm not saying this is the Bible, but this is the report that Brockton sends officially to the DEP and to this commission. And for Furnace Pond, there's, as of yesterday, it was, according to Brockton, 5.37 inches below full. Now, below full, I mean statutory full, what the 1964 law says. Yes, I don't believe that. That's why, that's yeah. why. That's why I said it's not the Bible. That's what I'm just telling <laughs> you. Uh, I live on the pond. Yeah. I know what it's supposed to be. I, I know, but this is what we have to deal with, yeah. the data. I'll I give you another example. Yeah. In um, Montpons Pond, they say on... August 18th, that Juan Ponce of Palm was 16 inches below statutory fault. Let me just finish. Let me finish. 16 inches below statutory fault. The next day, it was 19 and a half inches below statutory fault. Every other increment on every day is one inch. How can it jump three inches in one day with no rain, by the way? That's what I mean. This, this is yeah. crazy. And yet, it's the only data set legally right. that we have, that the DEP has. In other words, according to this, Brockton decides whether they divert water or not in, con in the context of 1964 law. This is why this commission right. wants to hire a consultant to start looking into this right. so we can solve some of these strange things that we're seeing. This is, this is why originally when I came to the meeting, I said what I... Really, what we really need in Pembroke is a gate room. 
is we, we need a level. Right. We need we need an engineer to say exactly this is normal right here. Right. Yeah. Right. And and that can be transmitted to our town hall to tell us that yep. we're we're right at the level of the natural level of that the way that forms. I, I don't even think you right. get this report. The um, Halifax town administrator gets it, we get it, and um, I think Jones River gets it. Yeah. And so, but that, I mean, and, and you we, have every right to this information, however flawed it might be. Yes, that's right, right, I understand that, but that doesn't help us anymore when we look at the pond, because we're looking at the pond now, and it's down, I mean, my pontoon boat is sitting on the bottom. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, yeah, my, I, I live on my, my pond's a pond, mine's yeah, the lowest I've ever seen. It's more than, but the problem this year is unique, because last year we, we've had the most fish that have come upstream. In years, you know, right? Just, 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 yeah, I've seen. Just, I've gone out there. You can see yeah. the backs and, breaking the yeah. water, yeah. and it's uh, and the guys have really worked hard to clean all the streams and get everything all done right for the fish to be coming upstream and right. like now, to do this now, spawning and all that. If I can have and, 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 drop, sorry. And we've and we've saved water. We yeah, we, we saved the water by by putting boards in and and lifting the gates to save water, but then Brockton takes it. Yep. You know, it's like, Can I interrupt though, honestly? Yes, please. According to this data though, Brockton hasn't been taking water from Furnace Pond at all this month. No, there's a reason for that. No. Well, they, no 19, they, 1964 they, law prohibits some of the I understand, I understand yeah. there's a reason for that. Yeah. But I'm just getting to the point is that I'm concerned because you're talking about the water is very low for the running of Herring Brook, right? I'm very concerned about that. Yeah. And my first thing is, is it because of water management? Right now it's not because we're taking water. It's because we're in a drought. Well, it's the starting point. The starting, starting point. Well, right. uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Can I just interrupt? Yeah. Possibly, if we didn't take water earlier in the year, this wouldn't be happening. Is that yes, what you're getting at? That's right. right. Okay, yeah. now I, get you. I just have to yeah. bring it as a building yeah. block here. That's all. I, I, when I, I have, see I, the data, I want to go from data and build from there. I have, I have to add yeah. that, as I said earlier, to build. Brockton stops taking water from Furnace Pond sometime in March, every year. Now, some, this year, that wasn't good enough because your fish arrived earlier than you thought. Right. But, I mean, they do, they do give you some consideration, whereas Mon Ponte Pond gets no such consideration. They take water right to More the consideration. end. consideration. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they only <laughs> take water. We'll take water when it might poison their water. That's right. They, I've said to Brian Creed many times, there's fish and then there's humans. In Mon Ponte Pond, and... Yeah. Ultimately, Silver Lake. It's not just about fish; it's about human public health. Right. And then Brian just looks at me and, and smirks, and that's that. Yeah. Yeah. But so yeah. I mean, I, I'm not to say that Pembroke doesn't have issues. You do have issues, yeah. but Brockton it does try and meet your you somewhat halfway no, by. No, no, I say they I voluntarily have, stopped the verdict. Right. So do you working. think that would still be flowing if Brockton didn't take any water from Furnace Pond earlier in the year? We've, we've been working with Brian, and he's been really good to us. I mean, yeah. if I get on the phone and call yeah, him out tonight and say, "Listen, we've got a group of fish. You know, they hadn't. You know, we can't have you diverting or whatever. He'll shut the he'll shut the diversion down." That's so right. You, you must things. not have been at the meeting I was at with Kim Roy, Halifax select woman, and Brian was in the room, and I said, "Gee, you do that for Pembroke? If Kim calls you and asks you not to divert because of, of algae, would you would you stop diverting?" He just laughed. <laughs> so you do have somewhat of a yes. favored status with Brian. We, we do. We do. We do. But I have a question about your, your gate though in the pond and in, in, in the Herring Brook. So are you opening the gate up to let to let water flow down the brook right now? No, there isn't any. There just no. isn't enough at all. No. At all, none. No. That stinks. No, it's real. Water. No. Real. Water. We, we have dry. Trying to worry, but we have dry fish sure. ladders. They're dry. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem is, is that. If, if we're allowed, uh, Brockton says, okay, you can have 300,000 gallons a day, okay? Well, if you multiply that during the summer months, right, for that 300,000, come September, when the migration starts, we should be at a good level to allow those fish to go downstream. Right, let me ask you a question. Is there a possibility of just a natural environment that this happens, droughts happen, Ponds get smaller, fish fill in, they can't get out, and then a monsoon comes by sometime in August or September, and this naturally happens, they all get out. Has that, has that happened? That, does that, has that ever happened? 
Is that a pattern of the environment? Do we know? Yeah, like it, it is, right? It can happen. You can have droughts. But yeah. we're, we're talking yeah. about an altered system. No, I, I totally, have, I for so totally long understand. I totally to understand. Say. I'm just putting every variable I know sure. well, from growing up in this region on the table. Well, we're all. wondering. We're, now. we're wondering where yeah. we want to go in Pembroke. Right? Yeah. You know, we, had, uh, we had Cutler in at our last election meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, we, and most all of the selectmen talked about the water issues with Pembroke. And it's not only Brockton. Um, Abington Rockland has taken water so so much there that, that that Big Sandy Pond is down so much that I think that that is lower than Furnace Pond. So the aquifer or whatever. Can I interrupt you one second? Abington and Rockland is taking water from where? From Big Sandy. That's in Pembroke, but it's not one of the ponds we have any jurisdiction over. Right. Oh, really? No. Who has jurisdiction over that? No one? Yeah, water, 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 water. That's, a, that's a company, isn't it? Is that a private company? No, 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 no. It's a commission, I think. Well, so wouldn't you have jurisdiction? Yeah, it doesn't. It's not in the 1964 law that created oh. so much. Right. It's not in our district. Right. It's not in the water district. It is in the district. I mean, it's, it's geographically located within it, but it's not. Oh, I know. It's crazy. It's right next door. You right. can see underneath it the water has gone through. There's copper yeah, for the, the, uh, yeah. the people who drafted the law didn't realize that. It's their own entity. It's so, yeah. You guys yeah. So, water. last year, um, we sent a letter to Brockton and we sent a letter to Abington Rockland. Mm -hmm. And we said, um, Are you diverting water? And both of them said, No. Well, the stream is coming from Oldham Pond into Pembroke Pond and it's coming pretty good. There's no water going over the dam. So, <laughs> where is it going, right? Well, it's not evaporating that, you know, that much. You know, it's like someone's saving it, it's going somewhere, right? So, if you keep lowering all these ponds, what I'm trying to get at is Jewish Commission is, if, if Brockton, if we keep allowing them to lower the ponds, lower Silver Lake down to, you know, to where it is, and, and they're not doing something else out there to help, right? We're always going to be in this avenue of being oh, yeah, way down below. Well, yeah. I think this we commission point is integration. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like I told Brian, I said, Pembroke doesn't say, okay, well, we, we don't want you to have any of our water. We're, we're not like that at all. As a matter of fact, it's, uh, Brian, we have extra water. Can we divert some? In the right times of the year that, that we want to divert it because we have plenty of water. But, but there's uh, usually Silver Lake is full. And he says, well, we can't take any. Right. What do you mean so, by usually Silver Lake? I was about to say. <laughs> well, no. When is Silver Lake? No, no, the times that we have extra water that, you know, because, I mean, I can remember from years ago, we used to call and, and we would say, um, listen, we're expecting, you know, three inches or four inches of rain. And we're already to our level. Is there any way you could lower the level uh, so that we don't have flooding conditions and stuff now, three days ahead of time? because we're preparing for a lot of water coming in. And, well, they, and they take the water. By the way, let me tell you a little example. When I was a Brockton Water Commissioner, one thing that citizens were coming to me about was water management flooding the community. Brockton succumbs to major flooding when there's major rainfall. Brockton is a, is a city which had a major riverway that goes through major tributary streams that have been, been put under piping and all that. I don't know the right words, but anyhow. All I'm getting at is there's, there's systems in our system that have been designed years ago that still work today, that if people were progressively thinking and being alert of what's going on in the environment on a day-to-day -day basis, there'd be very little flooding in the city of Brockton. I've seen these things, but they just don't do it. So I'm with you on that. So we're stuck with people who just aren't progressively doing their job or doing their job to the T to like how they really should be doing it because for some reason the political aspect of it, allowing people to get away with this kind of job ethic. You know, so I apologize to the citizens of Brockton. I really do. I feel bad. I really do. I grew up in Brockton. I'm tired of it. You know, I mean, it's like, I mean, they've made this water system that's, that, that is designed to deal and mitigate flooding in the community, and no one does it because someone's got to get out of a desk and go and do something. And it's so, so drives me crazy, you know. Um, well, the other thing I think that we try to address, too, is that, Pembroke has spent a lot of money in buying land and all that uh, so that we don't have anything going into the Brockton water that, you know, that's going to be damaging, you know, on that end. It's more purified 
water that's going in there now than there ever was before because we've bought all the cranberry bogs that we could possibly buy in Pembroke. So mm -hmm. there isn't any, you know, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, stuff that they used to spray on the bogs and pesticides, uh, you know, yeah. pesticides yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It's not getting into the nutrients, yeah. you know, it's not getting in there. So, um, and we're trying to do. A lot of good things with our ponds to keep them up and going. Well, it's pretty tough, and I think the last time I was saying we we're in the process of trying to spend some money, which is going to mean millions of dollars in order to dredge Furnace Pond, uh, which we're going to need water to do that. So, by taking the water out of out of Pembroke and lowering it down so low that it is, it's like we don't even have the normal of the 300,000 gallons going over every day. And you were talking about dredging for the purpose of? Of, of uh, keeping the pond the way it is. There's so much sludge in there now. There's probably, there's probably nine to 10 feet of sludge that's all in the bottom of the pond. And if we can take all of that out, that's gonna be replaced with water. Right. Okay. And it's gonna make a better habitat for the fish and, and uh, all the way around. So, that's great. Um, you know, within the next couple of years, uh, once the permitting is all done, there's a lot of engineers that have been working on all of that stuff in Pembroke anyway. And I was going to mention that to you. If you're looking for engineers to do something, there's, there's, uh, there's some engineers that are doing stuff on Furnace Pond now. So, That's, uh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure so you could probably call something. our, our town know. executive secretary, administrator and uh, you could probably you know, maybe it wouldn't cost you as much money because I've already done a lot of it. So Ed, Ed Thorne? Yes. Yeah. So um, he, he could probably help you out on that end of it. Can we look a little more globally outside Pembroke, for example, and talk about Silver Lake? And sure. Yeah. Um, so I was hoping you'd speak. Also, um, I find it interesting that Brockton has consistently been used in aquarium. Very interesting. Very interesting. And unprecedented. It is unprecedented. And if Brian were here, I would say, so this is this going to be the template going forward after October 1st? Because, as Bill said, he's not going to want diversion when the herring are going to be migrating. And in the case of Mon Ponce Pond, there's two things happening. One is the cyanobacteria count is still outrageously high. It's the most recent report, 10 times the safe limit. Um, we're down below a million. That's the good news. But we're still at 670,000 cells per milliliter, and the safe limit is 70,000 cells. May I remind you, the safe limit is not really safe. safe. It's, a de right. it's, it's, it's a a Department of Public limit. Health limit. Right. And the other thing is, Montpons upon is very low. Very low. Um, it's almost well, it's 17 inches below statutory fold. So if that trend continues, we don't get tropical storms or anything, there'll be no diversion from Mont Ponce to Pond in October, November, and possibly December because of water quality issues and quantity issues. Those will be below the statutory uh, elevation. And as it probably will be in furnace. Yeah. Um, so, Speaking to Brian in absentia, um, he better get used to this reality of 3.8 million gallons a day from Aquaria, plus looks like uh, six, nine, six, seven, seven to nine million yeah. gallons. Which, like, which is not cut. Which, as you can see, is not cutting. No, yeah, it's not cutting. It's so, not getting so, up to which is which gets to the you know the point that we've been saying since last winter. Well, for 20 years, but mm -hmm. since since last winter that. With the water quality issues in Mount Ponce Pond, um, there's going to be nowhere to turn come up, come October. No. And even Aquaria isn't enough. There, it's it's great to see the amount of Aquaria use that, that they're using. I don't understand how Brockton's doing it. The last when we were in front of City Council six weeks ago or whatever it was, um, there was a long discussion about how they were going to do 15 days in June and 15 days in July to do a 30-day test and stop. And they've been going a full month past that, so I don't know how they're doing it financially. Oh, I don't I know, know what their plans it. are for the future. They have ten percent water rate increase, two million dollars. No, they, they have the money, okay. but There's it's no in, it's interesting. It. I mean, they've said that they weren't going to do well, it. Well, of course, because are, here's, so. here's the thing: is, is that yeah. I think com coming from Brockton's standpoint of view, is that 
the political leadership don't want to go and try to do something to try to see if they can break a contract, to go in front of a judge and say, hey, can we renegotiate this contract to favor Brogdon? Look at us. We're paying $6.5 million a year and not getting a drop of water. Really? It's a natural resource. Give me a break. Bad contract. We all know it's a bad contract. Come on. You can't, I mean, you can't actually, in my opinion, be irrational and not think it's not a bad contract. Um, so they did that. They did that over 30 days, over fiscal, two fiscal years. Yep to kind of save the money, to hide the money. They did do the rate increase. They do have money in the, in, in the finances of the water department. I was there as a water commissioner. I saw the money. They don't want to tell you there's any money, but there is money. They just don't want to tell you there's money, but there is money. Until someone's there as a leader saying, no, there is money to redo the, the Main Street thing, we'll do it. They just don't want to spend the money because they're safe. Long of discussion, they're safe for other reasons. Um, but so right now they realize that there's a little public sentiment saying you can't do all this. You know, there's people on the Brockton Water Commission, so so what we're doing is working. You know, um, so I'm happy. They will. Uh, chances are, they will continue to use Aquaria, provided this drought's in, in effect. Is it enough water? Probably not. Um, if the drought continues, I mean, I mean, there's gradual gradual droughts, and there's also drop-off droughts. You know, these numbers could could jump by 10 inches a day. Possibly too. Well, they will start coming down a lot faster. You know, so so I understand droughts. You know, I mean, I, I I've seen them in my lifetime, and so um, I think you'll see them continue to use Aquaria until it becomes inevitable, inevitable for them to realize that they should look up to MWRA. And I'll get to that. Is that the article of the Sunday? Is I they called me and I did say that I think Brockton should look up to the MWRA. There's no question about it. I mean, it's it's there. It's usable. They got the the resources. The finances are right. Right. It, it's it's just, it's the most silliest thing not to do. Um, in my lifetime, is not to hook up to MWR. And they, yeah. they should start planning that now. Right. Yeah. Can I right. can I make a few more points? Yeah. No, I, I'd like to make a point, pa Patrick. I don't think you can. Um, um, I don't agree with your logic about uh, the contract being bad with the area. It's not entirely a natural resource. Somebody sunk a lot of money into building that plant, which is very expensive. Right. right. And if it's not being used, they still need to be paid for it. I agree. But Brockton. I, agree. And I, I, I agree. fear that we can say things that feed Brockton is. Uh, um, you know, irrational. Uh, um, you know, uh, you know they, they signed the contract, so it, it doesn't make a lot of sense them to complain about it afterwards. They should be using. I am pleased to see that it seems like it's being consistent, consistent, which tells me that the plant is actually working, as opposed to it going up and down, which means they've got maintenance issues. Aren't they permitted? Aren't, isn't it designed for what 4.4? Um, that's now, that's no, yeah, no. that's pushing the limits of it. Yeah. It's um, it, 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 it it depends on the operation. They could know. put another another thing in. They could well, they ball. could right for the few that the and that future. would require that some further permit. I, I understand that. I understand so the full maximum of you know, what it's built for and what it can do. Alex, you have something to say? Well, I one one point I didn't want to. We kind of glazed over when you're talking about towns with water restrictions and towns that don't need them because they're on wells. And then we went into a discussion about aquifers being low and ponds draining into other ponds. Surface water, groundwater, aquifers are all the same water. And the concept of not needing water restriction because you're on a well and then worrying what is happening to your surface waters yeah. is crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, so I just want to make sure yeah, that everyone is on the same page yeah. that water is water um, in, our, in our resource. And so, um, yeah, I've measured the water level in my own personal drinking water well, and it's down. So it's if Pembroke is concerned about pond levels, they should be concerned about well well use. Uh, I'm not Private wells, yeah, public wells. They could very wells. well have a water restriction. I, just yeah, I went on your website. Yeah. There's nothing on your website, and they're not on the DEP list. So the, that's the best I can do. And, and, and a great example is Kingston, while we're doing the kind of drought roundup. Um, Kingston doesn't take any water out of the Jones River, but Jones River flows are what guide their drought management policies yeah. because the river is an indicator of the overall water in the system. Mm -hmm. Jones River is at the lowest flows ever recorded right now, um, and it's got one of the longest running US GS stream gauges back to the 60s. Yeah. So this is, it's pretty significant. We're, we're down to basically no water in the river. It hasn't, um, Jones River hasn't flowed out of Silver Lake for 16 months. Wow. Um, it is bone dry. Art and I walked around there the other day. It's just a, the, the upper Jones River is just sand. Thanks. Wow. And it's going down fast. And 
there's a lot, you know, the, the shape of the, the bathymetry of the lake is that it, it's kind of shallow on the edges and then it drops off. There's a lot of water in that five inches that is around the shoreline. Right. And now that we've depleted all that and we're going it's down the cone, down. it's going to start going down fast. And so to your point, Paul, uh, come October, when we're in the middle of this extremely hot, dry summer, mm -hmm. the cyanobacteria blooms in Mount Ponset are still going to be off the charts. Yes. And they will be till December if, the, if history has been an indicator. Let me ask you a question, though. Just like hypothetical, uh, out of the actual geography of Civil Lake, if we weren't taking any water from Civil Lake, would there be water flowing down the Jones River, you think? Or are we still? Well, again, it's, it's difficult. The Brock's have been taking water out of Silver Lake since 1902 or something like that. Yeah. So it's a little hard to know what the natural flow regime is. Modeling says that there would always be flow from Silver Lake to the Jones River. Right. Is that true in a drought? I, I can't, I it, can't it, say for sure. There would always be if there was no Forge Pond Dam. Right. right. Because as long as there's a Forge Pond Dam and the boards are in place, the water's not going to flow down. The well, yes and no. If there weren't withdrawals, it would flow over the dam. Uh, yeah, except an extreme drought. Um, and the dam created a whole hydrologic setup there through that's for, for, uh, Forge Pond that allowed sediment to build up, which, yeah. which is that like that exactly. right. In 1901, that elevation was a lot lower. That's right. Yes. Yeah. No doubt. Probably. Uh, another, I don't know. Um, if this is if you're going to get to this, but there was a big drought management call yesterday. 400 participants. I didn't know about that. No. Uh, I missed it. Also, I had another call. To be honest, list? it was uh, coordinated by MEMA, and I have the um, the notes from Mass Rivers Alliance. I was just reading while you were figuring out your financial situation. <laughs> um, I don't blame it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the Interesting bullet points, and I can send you these notes after. Um, one of the questions that came up on the call apparently is, what is the likelihood of MWRA sharing its water with towns that are in an emergency situa situation? What is the process for this? And the answer to that was, towns need to do an emergency declaration to DEP to provide for a 30-day or six-month hookup for MWRA water. Ashland is currently doing that. The water would still be a meter, be metered and sold at a modest premium for the hookup. Yeah. So it's something worth knowing that there is an emergency MWRA. Now that you connection. said that, I read that someplace recently, and I can't. And it wasn't that man. Yeah. And I, I think I think it's an interesting thing because we've talked about MWRA. Patrick just brought it up, and it's always a long-term solution. You know, wh where do we go from here? But if there are um, emergency hookup opportunities. It could be, in, in not just speaking for Brockton, anyone in the in the district, it could be an option worth worth understanding. Thank you. That's good to know. The, um, well, two points about that. First of all, the, the, the community itself has to ask for it. That's that my declaration. That's for sure. <clears throat> Which means Brockton has to be motivated on their own. This commission can't do anything about it. But, it may, but it may be an option. Right? Secondly, there has to be some kind of an infrastructure in place. And, are there any communities in our district? I, any I think that in Brockton's case, they can they could make a hookup Stoughton. through Stoughton. Yes, yeah, it wouldn't be enough. I well, I don't know. Folks I'm not. I don't want to yeah, speak to their whole system. But, but I think that right. they could get some volume from yeah. through Stoughton. Yes, they they told they told us that a state house meeting that represented Calder Range and Kate Archer was there and Pine was there and that's what they said. So would it be better? Would it be in a million gallon per day range? Do we have any idea? At all? I think so. It only really takes something ever come up in your uh, uh, No, you know, when I spoke to anyone regarding starting these conversations with them, they, they, uh, um, amount was not flow amounts were not really part of the conversation, um, which were on the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, um, it's a long, drawn-out process. But I think, I think. Those in the district are slowly realizing the authority that this commission has and the weight and the serious, seriousness in which we take, take into account these issues. And um, again, in the future, I, I you know, I really do see them WRA hook up at this point in my in my understanding of all of this, in my time here in water, dealing with water. Um, it's almost a triangle of things, you know, and WRA, Aquaria, and Silver Lake. You know, Brockton probably will never give up Silver Lake. 
Um, it's been there, it's paid for, and it's, it's well established. So you, you pull, you have always going to have Silver Lake somehow, uh, and use Aquaria or Silver, Silver Lake in MWRA, RA. when there's droughts, MWRA, Aquaria. Yeah. Um, hopefully over time, Brockton and the city itself can, can look at its, its wells, its two well, city wells. They give out a half a million gallons a day, and maybe someday those can be repaired and the water coming out of that will be good. It's also Brockton Reservoir, which is very low right now. They took a little more out the other day than they normal. Um, you know, um, another so uh, that's how I see the future, really, I do. Um, Alex, um, Silver Lake, have you seen its condition lately? Yeah, we were, I was there on a Friday. How, how green is it? It doesn't have the, um, the surface algae problems that, that Montfonts and in front of us have, but it does have the, it, an increasing macroalgae problem yeah. on the bottom. That's what I'm seeing. Yep, and um, with, the, with the overflights we did, you can really see the extent of it. Yeah. And, um, and that's nutrient-driven. And yeah. that is, uh, you know, it's anecdotal, I guess, but for people who've lived around the lake, it's, it's a big change in the past I've years. seen it a lot. I've seen it increasing every year, and I hear it from people, and... I, I guess I don't want to beat a dead horse, but but um, I I'm, I have many frustrations. <laughs> and the, possibly the biggest one, which I think you get, Alex, I'm not sure if the public gets it well enough, is that just because the algae count is high in one pond at pond or lower than the limit doesn't mean it's safe to divert water. Every time that water is diverted, Silver Lake gets all the nutrients. It's like right. it's like throwing soup mix into Silver Lake. And then the warmth of the summer make cooks it into soup. Well, what, it, what it's really like is throwing a, a seed supply with fertilizer yeah. into the lake. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the cyanobacteria, even if it's not there at, at actionable levels, right. it's there in cyst stages and low right. levels. It's the and that's the seed stock for cyanobacteria bloom right. moving into Silver Lake. And meanwhile, it's getting the fertilizer, the, the nutrients. Yeah. And, and that, that's, you know, not, not that I want to, I, I, I seem to be destined to disagree with you tonight, Patrick, but <laughs> Brockton's fine. counting on Silver Lake. I wouldn't be counting on Silver Lake. I wouldn't either. I think I can I'm, see a Clean Water Act action taking over that issue. Yeah. And if you look around the country, and I know that some people in Brockton have looked around the country at, this has been the summer of cyanobacteria blooms all over the yeah. country. Florida, California, Washington, Utah. And I know there's been folks in Brockton who have said, see, it has nothing to do with Brockton. It's all over the place. But I think that's a, a narrow-minded view. It, instead, it's, it's a no, no, harbinger. Can I, interrupt, can I interrupt as a Brockton representative? No, that's not. That's those people who are, own, those are very, a small amount of people yeah. who are the caretakers of the, of, of, of the city of Brockton right now. There's a lot of us out there who know this issue is out there, but it's so tough to crack that city hall on those people who have the trigger, okay? You got a, you got, you got, we've got two Brockton Water Commissioners who I've talked to exclusively who are great people who want to move forward, but there's three other guys in the commission that don't want to do anything, okay? So it's very difficult, okay? Yeah, right? I, I agree. And I, and I, I mean, point, it's a very point. small, small thing, and we were cracking it. We are cracking it. It's going to take a very long time. But I mean, I would like to move on a little bit other things too, if we can. Sure. Just, yeah. We're just honestly at this point okay. beating the drum. We're talking to the choir. Yeah, right. You know. Well, I was going to say we could do uh, some action yeah. items. Yeah. Do you have something next door into other business? Well, I did work on some business cards. Okay. I had done a bunch of different designs, and honestly, I, I went with trying to do more like water things outside of officialness, but it looked like we we're trying to sell water. Yeah. It looked like we're carnival artists. <laughs> so I just did. I did these three here. If you can look, just I went for just kind of modern kind of thing. I just it has the two state logos and the county logo, which we're told we can't use the county logo, right? For some odd right. brain. What's the? Do you know what the actual? There is a it, there is a state statute that states can't be used unless it's county, uh, direct county business. Unless it's direct right. county business. Yeah. And what would constitute county business? Something that there's a set of statutes. I think it's 34. Chapter 34. Okay. Yeah, that that dictate what county is and what county is not. So, and, and I believe me, I, I am the last guy to no, get you, I get up you. with that. I, I totally understand. <laughs> so, do you think there's anything, be crazy. So is there anything in the language that would say that could let the county commissioners say the, the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission is doing county business and therefore we allow them to use our signal? 
are assembled. I, I don't, because the county involves Brockton and other things, I don't think it's yep. to your benefit. Okay, great. Very good. So Sounds good to me. So we'll Sounds use the state logo since we're living under this very strict state county rules. So now to get to that, yeah. I, I sent out a, I called the state, the, 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 uh, uh, Secretary, Secretary Galvin's office. Yeah. Uh, the woman is uh, Lori Sullivan, who uh, was very nice. She's actually going away on vacation, so I sent her an email. She doesn't think it's a problem. It's, 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 it's our, there's no major thing. It's just it's a law thing on making sure who you are. Yeah, we're in the law. I'm not saying, she's not saying it's, it's a done deal. She's on vacation. She's, yeah. she's coming back at the end of this week or the middle of this week. So we're to hear back from her. Um, so, and I just did this kind of light one. We can just do other graphics and stuff, yeah. but just kind of get an idea of what's going on. Well, um, you know. Jack one thing I did mention, though, is I didn't, I dropped the word district. Only because okay. putting district in there, it was so damn long, it got confusing, that to us it was like the Central Plymouth County Water Commission is only part of a water district anyhow. Mm. And I, felt, I don't know if you need, felt like we needed a district or not, but we and can I rework think you it. Do. It is the state legislation. I think you do. Because otherwise, as Bill said, he's talking about uh, Abington and Rockland. They're not in the district. So right, the Central Plymouth County Water Commission. But are they Plymouth County? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there's a, that would be confusing. Yeah. But could I ask you this question though? Yeah. Could you instantaneously say this? The Central Plymouth County Water Commission is a commission for the Central Plymouth County Water District, which makes which makes up these town these towns. Hey, I'm just work playing with it because you know what? Yeah. We are government. We are a democracy. And if we can play I with it, we have to have a word district in there. Okay, cool. If it really looks like crap, crap, then. Um, it looks weird. That's the only thing. It's like it's very it's, long. It's, well, it's a, a really long thing. It drives me long. As your, as your esteemed clerk, it drives me crazy typing I don't, it. I don't think there's some <laughs> legal thing that we have to have the word in there. I have no problem saying Central Plymouth County Water Commission. Say, what is that? Oh, it's the district is this. You know? Well, it's not a big deal. I could go either way. I just I'm just saying, I'll make some more up with it. But that, I just... Yeah, they look good. I don't want the other ones. Yeah, I like, I like to look other ones. I like this one, the bigger statement. I like that, them. and I, I'd like the, I'd like commissioner to be capitalized. The C. That is, it's, well, it is all capitalized, just smaller. Just, just, just the... Just the bigger C. Yeah. Okay. Just, the, just, the first, just the first letter of commissioner. The C is capital, and that's it's lowercase. Okay. Well, that looks great. I like Jack's. I agree with Jack. I like the bigger okay. combo. And I did the idea of putting our town yeah. down over here. That's so cool. just yeah. to say that nice we, where we're from, yeah. you know, like, why not? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And then the letterhead and stuff like that, I just right. started with this, and I can have that all more worked up once I get the okay from the, the, the state. Because if we don't get that okay, then we have to figure out something else. Not that we can design our own. Which eventually we could. We could probably, on our, on eventually, we could design our own logo. Yeah, well, yeah. if we have to. Let's hopefully get the state. Yeah. Which I think that, that'll happen. Thank you. That's great, Patrick. Good, good job. Anything else? Um, the only thing I want to bring up is since we're talking about, we, we seem to iron out how we're going to get to our money, um, I'd like to start doing something with it. Um, and I, I, I'm willing to continue my discussions with consultants to see who's interested. Please do. Uh, and I have a question for Frank, and you and I touched about, on this earlier, um, about whether, um, in my mind, there's certain natural divisions of the work we're going to do initially that, that that are fairly minor, like getting survey information to get the correct elevations on the control structures that are referred to in the law and, and by, by Brockton. Um, and these things may end up coming in, like say we hire a surveyor, they might be less than 10000 bucks. We might want to have, I'd like to have a water systems engineer, the commission might like to have a water system, systems engineer look at these reports and validate them. But you would use the uh, term bid splitting that May, make it, it almost may, somebody might perceive we're trying to get around the, 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 the Yeah, I, I wouldn't, it sounds like they're separate roles just because they're working in the same ponds and everything. Yeah. Bid splitting is, I, I want to buy a table and chairs for a room and I'm going to buy 50, 50 chairs and 10 tables and I split them into oh, chairs okay. and tables. Oh, yeah. So you, you're purposely trying to get around a dollar, a dollar amount. So that you can get rid of bid, the bid processing. I, I'll, I'll, I think I gave you, but I'll send. Yeah, I was going to say I'll follow that, but I, I just want to know that up front because in speaking to the various firms that I'm familiar with, anyways, like Princeton Hydro yeah, and whatnot, yeah. they're they're all in very narrow compartments. They, yeah. I, I've yet to find a firm that I that I believe can do the work without conflict or inefficiency. Uh -huh. 
that can do everything under one roof. I'll send you, if you want, I'll send you Ed Thorne's email. Great, sure. He's, he's the town minister at the Pembroke. What exactly? What's the threshold? He's got the experience. Um, I think it's 5,000 like, For 30B, um, no, it's, it's up or it's so even more. So, so um, 10,000 and below is, is general business practices. Yeah. And, and, and what I'll, that's what I was going to say. I'll email you all. The, there's a, a great grade by the inspector general yeah. that says, what is uh, you know for thirty B this amount is is what you right I, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a great e one page grid to have for yeah. you I'll, I'll email that for you to you tomorrow morning yeah my That's recollection is uh, the things that we have changed was it's if you're up to ten thousand you got to get three 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 prices it's actually higher than that higher than but you don't have yeah, to up go to ten thousand you don't even need three you don't have to go it's through the central business price they call business, it business practices, business practices. Yeah. yeah it's all state government yeah. yeah yeah and then it's ten thousand to it's just, like and so thirty-five thousand is three bids. Yeah, it, it so three, not even three, three bids. It's yeah. three quotes. Yeah. Right. So you have to ask for three quotes. You don't even have to receive three quotes. If oh. you ask for a quote and, the, and you document that they who you ask for and they don't give it to you, that's yeah, just as good. good. Yeah. Well, should I do that? I'll, I'll turn. I get <laughs> bidded all the time, and I know what they're doing. I'll just turn. I'll just turn. Don't give me a quote anymore. In fact, I mean, that part of the process, if we, if we get to that point where, we, where, where the 30B laws do fall, where you know, we have to get three bids or that nature, and we, is that something that you're going to be requiring us to prove of evidence be, to pay invoices as well? Or, or is that in due faith we keep that that as a record of our Yeah, you, you would keep that, that information as a record. You know that, that you do it for your own protection. Uh, I am glad to help out in any way I can. Okay. You know, so just that. to make this very clear too in that okay. process too is that, is that when we get to that point we have to go go through and make sure that we're following the, and making sure that we're on the table with these with these bidding laws. Um, is that that part of the process is that that's on us mm -hmm. on our, on us that, that the that the county will never require us to prove that we've gone through that process, but obviously we'll be here to guide us if we need that. So yeah. every time when we when, if we if we have to do, let's say, a, a, a twenty thousand dollar project. We have to have three bids. We never have to ask ourselves, "Oh, wait, we've got to prove this to the county before they get paid." They, we prove that process to ourselves. Yes. Right. And if ever, if anything comes through, it's it's on our shoulders, yep. which is, yep. which makes sense. Do, right. The only thing I could see that being an issue is it, it would be a little tighter if, if you go thirty five. So it's under ten thousand is sound business practices. Ten to thirty four nine 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 is solicit three written or oral. Quotes, not bids. Quotes, mm -hmm. and then thirty-five or over. It's sealed bid or proposal. You do have to advertise, oh, uh, yeah, so and, and yeah. you know, so it gets more. So it, if you ever did get a bigger budget, and you'd want to make sure that you do right. it right, because then what you do is, if you don't do it right, you you uh, run the risk of one of the people that didn't win the bids slowing down your project because they could contest it in court. Exactly. So that that's the advantage yeah. of you want to follow the steps. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's Not because of, of audit, but because they, they can bring you to court and then no, no, absolutely. No, absolutely. slow yeah. you down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank I'll, you. I'll email this over to you just to that's have great. it as a reference. Thank you. Okay. Okay, one piece of old business that we didn't we didn't uh, act on last meeting was the, the open letter. Um, we had a lot of input. <coughs> Mission members weren't in total agreement on it, and uh, Charlie actually had a, always has a few insightful comments, which I do appreciate. And I guess I want to throw this out there: is do we want to consider it tonight? And if we, uh, and I have a, I have a suggestion actually, because I think Charlie, you suggested pictures, mm -hmm. and I did track down the the old um, aquifer advisory brochure that we came up with, with the picture of the little boy drinking out of a hose, which is right up your alley. Alex had, has those drone pictures of Silver Lake, which I think something like that, or even better, if, if somebody can find a boat sitting on, on the lake shore canted over, it would be a very graphic illustration of what's going on. Um, but I, I guess we, we have a, we, I know I struggled with a letter and I was unhappy with the results of mine because it was too long, basically. And I think your point, Charlie, was make it short and have some nice pictures and I'll get people's attention. Charlie gave me the instructions. I failed, but I tried. It was, it was two I, pages. I don't know how you get this down, the text down to a short, inci well, incisive... His, his assignment to me was, for me, impossible. He wanted me to use um, double space, he wanted me to use yeah. a bigger font, and um, I did my best, but still found those two. Just, a, just under two pages. Right from radio. 
Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And, and I, I can think of, what's the word, not in, incisive, but inciting words to put in it, that a picture of Silver Lake half empty and poison, poisonous algae, but that and might be a bit much. Like, what's the goal of the letter? Right, you know, so I think we're, yeah, we're at the end of the, of the long meeting here, so yeah. I think what we need to do is two things. One, um, why don't you send us on uh, email some of your concerns? Okay. And um, can you send us that picture, the yeah. drone picture, a scan or whatever, and um, we'll uh, look at the also the aquifer picture. And I'll, I don't, I don't know. I'll you tour around. I'll tour around one pond to pond and see if I can find some high and dry boats. But I'm like more likely to find a green boat actually. But, yeah. yeah. I might just take my kayak and sell the shore Silver Lake and leave it there. Yeah. Tilt it over. Okay. But, but so I'll, I'll the, goal, the goal this would be to, to uh, resolve some of your concerns about content. Jack and I are pretty pretty okay on it, but we don't want to we don't want to just vote and say no. We're, you know, we don't want to listen to your. You know. No, I totally understand yeah. that. I, 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 I think it's a great idea. I'm just still concerned with the what, what the what the goal of that right. letter is to right. do. And, and um, quite frankly, if you, if, you, if you look at what's happened lately, the landscape has changed slightly in this regard. They're using Aquaria every day. That was one of the things that we had in our letter. Brockton has water restrictions. That's another thing that was in our letter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, check, check, you know, bit yeah, by so. bit. So, you know, for me, I'm fine with the content. I'm fine with putting a picture in. But I'm wondering if, you know, our target has shifted and we'd right. just be shooting at empty air. And, and keep in mind that I don't know to what extent the Brockton audience has read it, but Representative Coulter has issued a couple of what I think are very, maybe a little yeah. overly lengthy uh, uh, letters or articles. There was something in the Enterprise we was interviewed. Yeah, it was right, it's right so here. That was this, this is the yeah, one. Yeah, too, yeah. Is this the one? No, that's the, yeah. kind of the response to that. No, um, yeah, it, was um, the one, it was the one I got today from Pine. Right. Yeah. 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 I feel like if, if, the, if the goal is to energize Brockton citizens to talk and say, hey, get your people to do things differently, mm -hmm. we got to do that. I think the best way to do that is by getting people who are already involved in the issue getting involved with other people in the city. Yeah. Who know people? The, the general person, I don't think, is going to read a letter and go, oh, I've got to call what's going on. Right. I think there needs to be, I knew someone from the Jones River Water Set Association, and they reached out to people in Brock they knew. That's why I said we could reach out to organizations in the, in the city. Um, and I don't mind doing that. Um, so I, I just feel like it might be, I mean, on the other side, if you, a one-liner, a one-sheeter with some, Graphic or something. If it's about hey, it's Brockton. Look at it's drug time. Time right. to look up down down right. Time to do things differently. So let's let's let's, let's think that's fine. Let's but I feel table like, it for now. Yeah. With a with a or changed orientation to what you just said. One or two liners. Charlie knows I can't do one. Um, <laughs> with a picture or two pictures, and that will get the reader's attention as opposed to a lot of words. Which, which I think ultimately, if you want to, could then become a flyer that could go elsewhere, too. Right. If you want to do more outreach, those could go on bulletin boards in community places and churches. Mm -hmm. And that's where people are going to start so listening to things. One, why don't you draft up okay. one, 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 one or two lines, and uh, Jack will, um, and Alex for engineers, we'll suggest, suggest pictures. And um, we'll get together again. Now, I should point out. Uh, as far as future, I'm away at the end of September, so if we want to meet more like September 15th, I'm gone. I'll be in Europe after that. Yeah, you know, I would love to, if you guys want, at some point, is, is somehow if we can organize a working meeting during the day sometime at, at, at the ponds or something, yeah. you know, um, and because on my own, I'm going to go look at these, these, these gates and stuff, and there's other things that need to get fixed, it seems like, in the region. Um, and so there's a whole blueprint of things that we, I think we as a commissioners need to sit down and just say, well, let's get it. plenty of work. There's no lack of that. Um, well, give me a call. I've, I've got three guys here. I'd be more than glad to meet I'll you and take you around. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, so and, uh, <clears throat> one of the other things is... Uh, uh, well, well I understand, understand that you didn't... I count, well, remember half this is oh, Red Sox. I understand so. that you didn't get that letter. Yeah, I, am, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I'll have, Look for uh, it. What I'll do is I'll have the secretary... Uh, you send me your emails and all.
that? Yeah, that'd be best. Then, then I'll have her send a letter to We saw one from the Public Conservation Commission also. Did you get that? Pardon me? Did you get the one from the Conservation Commission? I didn't get any correspondence, and I've been looking periodically at the town hall in Halifax with where my, I have a mailbox there. Yeah. But I'll send it. Is it Sabrina? Yeah. Send it, yeah. She'll send it right to you. Yeah. So there won't be any, uh, you know, maybe follow it up by mail or something. Yeah. But, uh, we've, we've corresponded back. Yeah. That's how I got your Once yeah. the Commission finalizes business card and letterhead and all that, we can just send that to you to get that all done? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we print everything at the uh, Plymouth Correctional oh, uh, facility and, and they have the best rates that you can find. Oh, that's and great. So like, it'd be like a PDF format or something, or talk to someone else who deals with that? Or yeah, if you um, if you just give me what you want, uh, show me that's what you great. want, and we'll have it, we'll have it printed up. Okay, they great. do their own, they do the own design, camera ready, it's all set. And okay. And they do uh, like color, full page color brochures, things like that? Uh, yes, they actually do. Oh, do. There we go. That's, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, that, that's the open yeah. letter in that form. Yeah. And that'll be a, we'd just pay for, we would we'd right we'd, we'd get an invoice, we'd yeah. just transfer the money internally, you guys. So we have a vote, put it in writing, send it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the question I had about, I think it was the results of the email should be ready uh, by yeah, the beginning of September. Home, but the beginning of September, what would it be? What would the email uh, it'll, it'll end up being uh, your first initial, your last name at PlymouthCountyMA.org. <laughs> okay. And then will we also be able to get one that might be, that might say the acronym to the commission, or one that says Central Plymouth, you know, something else that's more, just not our name? Like the commission uh, oh yeah. somehow? Like country to uh, so, uh, like a fourth one? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's basically, it's uh, I think it's five ninety dollars a month oh, I see. for okay. our address. I see, okay, okay. I so, I you. you can get as many as you want. I guess we just would bill you for that. I guess, okay. Because right now, we're just billing you for the, the three at five ninety per month. So, so you're billing us five ninety times three per month? Yes. So, five ninety times three times 12. Right. Okay. So, and, and you can, if you prefer to have something different, uh, you know, different uh, label, uh, logo, and that's uh, Microsoft 365. Uh, so that's web access. It's uh, encrypted for municipal government. Um, we're just talking about the emails. Okay. So it's costing us two hundred twelve dollars and forty cents a year for emails. That for three emails. Three, three yeah. emails. Yeah. It's five ninety a month. Yeah. Um, Per, per, per email address. Right, yeah, that's So, you, you know, if you want a fourth app, you know, I get you. Yeah. commission app or something, you know, something like that we can do. Will there be space on the website for any page posting? Um, if you want us to put a page on there, we can more than happy to put a page on there. Right, posting. okay. It's part of our administrative support chart. That's great, okay. So basically you'd have your own um, tab. Yeah, I, I, I went online today and saw your website, and it said, you know, departments and stuff, and maybe somewhere along there I could say Central Plymouth County Water District. Yeah. That'd be great. We just do a tab right along the left because um, we have one for Mass, uh, Mayflower um, Municipal right. Health Group. We have one for the Plymouth Tire, you know, uh, Plymouth. So you contract your web page out to a web designer? Yeah, we use um, Baynet. Baynet, uh, so basically they, they uh, it, you're not going to find better rates. It's $50 an hour. <laughs> they do all your design content. and all that, and everything yeah. like that, and, they, and when you have to add on to the website, you send, send information to them. Yeah, just like the postings, so we post all your meetings on, on, on the agendas and meetings okay. of, of the tab. Okay. That's part of the uh, administrative. Uh, so would that be something in the future that would, to save a step, that if we've got more information we want to put on the website, to sure. just to talk, contact them directly? Yeah, go oh, yeah. Uh, John, John Sousa is the owner's name. Oh, right. Okay, so, great. you know, it, it's our website and, and our um, okay, great. Uh, okay. That's great. Know, domain. Okay. So, okay. basically, what we do is if you just sketch out what you want, we'll sit down and we can go through a, a conference call that's and awesome. get, get whatever that's you want. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. You know, dealing with Brockton people, it, it's it's like you, you just their smile is a wall. Your smile is like, yeah, here's a door. Come and sit down. Like, well, honestly, it's so wonderful because I work in the film business and I'm used to working with that in my personal professional life. And in my dealings with government in Brockton, it's it's like it's literally like a bull and a and a, and a mouse, you know. And it's like, and I'm not the bull. I'm the mouse. I have 30 years of private industry, so I'm yeah. just uh, giving the customer what they. What, That's amazing. What they Thank you so much. I really we do appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Okay, we are looking at scheduling our next meeting, and Paul indicated that he's going to be traveling. Yeah. So we're looking at the week of the 12th, the, the 14th, or the 15th.
Okay. Um, if either are fine by me, um, I'd prefer evening. I probably have to because that field work. Okay. If it's when that happens. Um, yeah, I'm, f I'm totally open actually. My schedule is free. I'm actually in New York for the next two weeks doing something, and so then I'm free after that. So. How about four the evening of the 14th at 7 p.m.? Good. Let's try that. Okay. To Wednesday. Excellent. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Venue to be determined. We'll probably be here. Yeah, I, I did get the, they did change the locks and they, they, they did give me the keys, which to my pleasant okay. surprise. So excellent. So you're still in favor. Well, not very, but somewhat. <laughs> I'm sorry. What day was that? The 14th. It's Wednesday, September 14th. Great. At 7 p.m. Thank you. Somebody gave me the cold trouble on the way in here. But. So I'm hoping that by then I'll, I'll have word from our our, our contact yes. in the state department or finalized copies. We can yeah. vote on those maybe. Right. Um, email those submit them to Frank. He's here. We'll have the photos, yeah. and you'll have a couple of a couple of uh, attention grabbing uh, sentences. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the full page um, PSA ad. Yeah. And I'll um, I'll recycle all these additions of the letter that I printed out <laughs> over the last six weeks. We all have them all digitally, so yeah. Well, I bring them to the meeting in case you people want to invoice it later. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> I answered that, that that thing I sent you. All the photographs and that from stock sources. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to pay a few for them. Yeah, yeah. You get to browse it. Yeah. So oh, exactly. since we have funds, I suppose we can do that. Because you, you're never going to get some of these. No. Um, you know, and I saw like a lot, a lot of great logos and photos. And <laughs> yeah, what's that? What's that? Fuck, you know. One, you know well, it makes sense. Good photographer. I mean, you drive around LA and you see residuals. Residuals everywhere. Residuals. Homes and people living off residuals for years. How can we get in on that? I wish. Um, can we get a, like a film out of this? I don't know if Hopefully, maybe. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'm, I'm working with uh, some tick people right now, and they're, they're actually filming a documentary about it now. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other business to be brought up tonight? I have a motion to adjourn then. I make the motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.